Who's got the extra reserves mentally and physically to get the job done? We're one final down and one to go here at the O2. Now the top two teams in the BBL go head to head for that ultimate piece of silverware. Rob Paternostro and his Leicester Riders have already lost their BBL League and Cup titles to the London Lions this year. Can they reverse the trend of the season finale? Or will the formidable Lions lock down as a sensational treble? It is a packed house of over 16,000 British basketball fans here at the O2, which is a delight to see. And what a game we have in store to entertain us all. Plenty of BBL legends on hand as well. Drew Lasker, Mike Tuck, Kieran Achara present and correct once again. And make no mistake about it, Drew, this is a heavyweight clash in them, isn't it? This is what we want. This is the finals, baby. We got the best two teams in the British Basketball League. Let the games begin. Now, the Riders have fallen short this season. I talked about their titles going to London, but of course they beat the Lions on this very court in this very game this time last year. So is that what Rob Paternostro is going to be channeling his team to think about? Not the recent history, but 12 months ago. Yeah, I think they'll be definitely channeling that energy from last season. They know they can beat this team, but also they're a battle-tested team through this playoffs already. Getting through the quarters and the semis to get here. I feel like everything's clicking for them at the right moment right now. The Lions are going to be without Sam Decker this afternoon, who was announced this week as the league MVP. Obviously, that's a loss, but how big an edge does that give the right today do you think? I think it is you know it's, it's important you know Sam Deck if you think about the cup final he was the one who single-handedly changed the game at the end for the, uh, against the riders so I think Rob won't be thinking about one player I think he'll be thinking about the, the form that they're playing the way they've been playing as a team and that'll build their confidence. This is undoubtedly the biggest game on the British basketball stage Mike talk us through the occasion as a player what is it like playing in the playoff final? Oh, it's absolutely incredible. Obviously, this is the biggest stage. This is the biggest moment of the season. And you walk in here, you feel the energy from the crowd and the momentum from from, from your teammates and, and everything. It's just it's one of those ones, a special moment. I'm glad I got to enjoy it. Fine, Tingley. What about you, Drew? What was your MO pre-big game like this? Were you hanging out, chilling in the corner of the locker room? Were you hyping up your teammates? What was your approach? Stand low-key. You know what I mean? you got to calm the nerves because you can wait all of your energy in the locker room so you want to stay calm and collected and, and, and anticipate that moment when you step out on the floor the three of these guys of course have had experienced on the biggest stage and of course so is Rob Paternostro looking for his sixth playoff crown as right as head coach which would be the club seventh in total of course the two so indelibly linked London have been runners up four times despite their other successes in recent years in search of their first playoff title this is how both teams got here to the O2, having won the league title with weeks to spare at record time. In fact, London, of course, took the top seat. They cruised past the Newcastle Eagles in their quarterfinal and then saw off Cheshire in the last four. Leicester with the runners up. They had to work a little bit harder to get here. 13-point winners on aggregate against the Sharks. Then a very close encounter with Bristol, losing the second leg at home last Sunday. But they did enough on the road in that first to win the tie by just three points on aggregate. Does that have any bearing, Mike, at this stage of the season? London easing through comfortably, Leicester involved in a much more difficult route to the final. Yeah, well, that's what I talked about, them being battle-tested. Uh, you know, that Bristol Flyers series was an extremely tough series for them. And even though they lost that second game, they, they won the aggregate. And I think that's a big test for them heading against the line, the London Lions now. They know they can kind of overcome a team like the Bristol Flyers, who are playing top-flight basketball at the moment, now heading into a big final like this against the London Lions team with everything to prove is going to be big for them. You know, we talked about the big rivalry between these two, Kieran, but Caledonia, 
Australia winning uh, the trophy. Of course, I had to get that on your behalf as a contractual obligation. Bristol, as we saw so close to making the final. So, sure, the Lions are dominating. Sure, the Riders are up there. But there's so much potential coming up, isn't there, in the BBL? There's so much, you know, on the rise. Everybody is really ramping up their game. And, you know, credit to the London Lions for kind of leading the way. But, you know, Every franchise knows that they need to step up if they want to be able to compete. And that's exactly what's happening at this moment in time. Yeah, London taking care of business pretty much across the board collectively as a team and adding even more silverware this week. When you win the league is what it means you've been the best team, of course, but you've been the most consistent team. This isn't a thing that you can randomly win. You know, you have to be the best team night in, night out. You're in a jam. Give the ball to Sam Decker, and he just delivers you out of a hole. With second twenty down. Oh my goodness! So Sam Decker, the newly appointed, anointed even league MVP, here he is in the building. Disappointingly, not just for the Lions, but of course for all the fans in the arena. Maybe not the writers, but everybody else won't be playing this afternoon. But more positively signing an extension to his contract announced this week, which means he's going to be back for more. That is great news for British basketball. That is huge news, a three-year deal, and he's been an ambassador for the league on and off the court, and there's nobody that we would want at this moment in time to be the face of the league. The league is in great hands right now. Given, Mike, how prolific he's been this season, averaging almost 17 points a game and a high efficiency with his shooting as well, how does the Lions' offense adjust without him? I mean, they, they're, they've strengthened numbers, right? They've got depth, and I think there'll be other guys hungry to step up in his absence. And I, like, the way they move the ball, their spacing and, and the, the pace of the, that they play at, um, obviously they're going to miss him, but they have other people to fill those gaps. Well, speaking of which, let's take a closer look at the Lions roster then, because with or without Sam Decker, it is stacked with talent. And, Kieran, it's a really interesting mix, carefully constructed, of course, experienced, younger talent players with both NBA and European uh, stops on their CVs, and it's underpinned by homegrown talent. Great homegrown talent, great core uh, players, and a lot of players coming back into the BBL for the first time, which is great to see. Uh, but, yeah, they're, they're, they're continuing to grow. They're, they're getting that European experience plus that, you know, that NBA-caliber player and then you've got that, that core British you know, numbers, which is really, really ramping up the game. Not to forget their coach as well, who, as we've just seen, uh, winning the Coach of the Year award. We've got to talk about the European success this team has had as well, because they've been dominating domestically, strong in Europe as well, Kieran, and Coach Schmidt has been instrumental in that success. Yeah, he's done a really good job of managing minutes and developing players as it goes on as well, which has been excellent to see. Players that were not, not really known, really stepping up and, and flourishing in Europe. Let's take a closer look at some of the players he has at his disposal who could be crucial this afternoon. Aaron Best, who, inter interestingly, Rob Padanostro voted for in his team of the season. Uh, that is all transparent, of course. So clearly, Drew, the Riders head coach sees him as a danger man. Well, if you've been paying attention to the league all season, you, you wouldn't doubt that, that selection because when the Lions went through a little bit of flux and injuries, he was the guy that stepped up, answered the bell, and carried this team throughout the season. Fellow countrymen, how significant can he be this afternoon? I love Aaron Best because he's like a Swiss Army knife. You know, he could be your sixth man. He could be your defensive player. Or he could step out there and be the best player on the court. So I feel like he's a little bit of a chameleon in the sense that he can fill whatever role is needed from him from the team. Sam Decker, NBA experience. Costa Kupos, of course, has had it as well. And so is this guy. And I guess when you're thinking about players that need to step up in the Decker boy today, he is number one on that list, Kieran. He was definitely the player I was highlighting. I think that Mione's got, you know, defensively, he, we know what he can do. He's an elite defender, but his scoring has been inconsistent. And he's, you know, he has battled a few injuries, but when he gets going, they're a better team. Join mid-season, of course. That's not to be underestimated on the play, but sometimes how the talent the play are, it takes time to adjust to this team. Yeah, it always takes time. It's a new environment, new team, new country. All those things play a factor, but that is part of being a professional. So tonight would be a great opportunity for him to show what he's worth. Other key players to think about today for the Lions, Tariq Phillip could be instrumental. Tariq Phillip, you know, a player I didn't even know he was going to be back this season. You know, he got a, a, a real serious injury. He was out. I, I thought he was out for this, uh, the season. He's came back and again. Another player, on-ball defender, phenomenal player. 
real strength. Like I said, he hasn't been scoring at this moment in time, but he can he can do it do it all. Bend to the court. Drew, how important is it to retain that British core of players to the Long Term Lions project? Well, it's important if you want to be successful domestically and in Europe because there is a quota in this league. You can only have a certain amount of Americans, so collecting the best British talent will help you moving forward. Okay, some of the key protagonists on the Lions side, what about the Leicester Ride as well? They have plenty of continuity, both in terms of returning players this season and their core starting five, including Patrick Whelan, Mark Loving, Zach Jackson, and the skipper, Darian Nelson Henry, who plays his final game for the riders today. Let's have a top three offense in the BBL, driven by how prolific they are from three-point range, where they rank first in the league. Rob Padanostra, the riders' head coach, he's been down this road many, many times before as he looks to take his team to another trophy, having won 17 in an illustrious career. Let's start with Kimball McKenzie. What a year he has had. True, every time he is called upon, he steps up and he's counting. I said it earlier, what you need, coach, come off the bench. You need me to start. He just gets it done. Offensively, he's a spark off the bench and been a huge asset. You can see his confidence that he has coming into season two, and the Leicester Riders have benefited from that. They've also benefited from Mark Loving's calmness, his languid, effortless style. Such a great player to watch, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's a great player to watch. You know, great size, can shoot the ball, able, able to get to the basket, plays defense. Love to see him excel today. He is uh, somebody they're going to be leaning on in terms of offense. So, of course, are the tag team of Zach Jackson and Patrick Whelan. They talked about their prowess from the three-point range, and it's those two players in particular that are front and center with that. They really get it going, you know, they move the ball so well, take some really good shots, high efficient shots. And I think they've been snubbed actually for, you know, when you look at team of the, team of the year, there was no Leicester Riders players there when they could have been three of them in the mix. And of course, Zach Jackson, is he's a big time player for a big time occasion, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, we saw him in the cup final and he pretty much saved the game for the Leicester Riders. And I agree with Kieran, he's been their best player all season and look for him to take his game to another level because we've been there before. When you get snubbed, you take it out on the opponent. OK, we're getting close to tip off here at the 0-2. As you can see, players going through their final paces, gearing up for the big season finale. Next up, we're going to be looking at some of the key head to heads that could well determine which way this one goes.
We're at the O2 in London, which is jam-packed with British basketball fans from all over the country for the biggest event of the year. In just a few hours, we'll know if the Lions have pulled off an extraordinary treble or if the Riders will be delivering the sucker punch. We headed to both camps this week to get their thoughts ahead of the big game. It's been a fun season for me. I think anytime you get a chance to, you're voted, um, you know, as an award winner amongst your peers, you know, it's, it's an honor to be honest with you. And to me, it reflects our success we've had as an organization, as a team. But it's been a fun year and obviously being able to cap it off with awards and hopefully winning a championship, uh, will be, will be nice. Playoff final is, is the most important. After this, the, the season is finished. This is the, it's the biggest game of the year. And, um, definitely we're looking forward to the challenge of that. Love into the key. Back out to the edge and Henry on the tree. The ability to finish my career in the O2, in the final. I don't want to call it a storybook ending, but it's definitely a desire and a goal of mine to finish my last season on a high note. I think on paper, at the beginning of the season, we'd be the underdogs. And as the season has gone on, you've seen how well they have played. So, you know, they've handled us in the times that they've played us. So, yeah, we are going in as the underdog, and uh, I think we enjoy that. They've been here before. They've played in this game, you know, countless times. I think I saw a stat where out of 14 seasons, Rob's been in the final eight years. Like, that's remarkable. And the stakes are high in these games. You know, these are games that, um, as a little boy, uh, when you're in your driveway and you're counting down five, four, three, two, one, these are the games that you're thinking of. These are the moments that you want to make happen. And I think these are the times that uh, every basketball player, coach, and fan dreams of. Lifting the trophy at the end of, of the season just validate all the hard work, all the extra reps, the practices, and, you know, taking care of your body and just all the sacrifices you make throughout the season. The stakes are definitely high going into this game. Uh, for me personally, but for riders as well, you know, we're, we're used to, we're used to having successful seasons, getting a couple trophies. You know, last year we got three trophies, and this year we have none. Nelson with the rebound. Behind the back to Decker. Decker down the lane with a flush! Time you lose your your captain, your leading scorer, um, you know, you're, you're, the game changes for you. We'll definitely miss them on the offensive side, um, but I think we'll be uh, be okay. I think we're comfortable in, in a situation now where it's not the first time we've had to do this. Playing in the O2 and the atmosphere that it that it provides is is second to none, and it, it's more than just the, the the feeling on court. You know, you're walking through the hallways and you see signed posters from Mick Jagger and the Black Keys and Outkast, and you know all these all these big names, and you're like. I don't belong in a, in a in an arena where these guys have played, but um, at the same time, you got 15,000 hungry fans waiting for you to come out and, and give your all in front of them. Now, nothing's going to be given to us, and we know that. And so, again, I think in order for us to, you know, wrap up the season the way that we all want to, you know, we're going to have to have 40 minutes of, of high elite focus and be able to execute our game plan. And if we do, then, you know, this season can end hopefully the way we want it to. You know, we're looking forward to a great day, a great day for British basketball. You know, I've been in this league a long time as a player and as a coach. And um, these days at the O2 uh, makes you proud to be a part of it. So Darian Nelson Henry, as we've seen there, retiring at the end of this game. What a way to go out, Mike, win or lose, although he's used to winning plenty of times over the years. How pivotal has he been to this rider's success? Oh, I mean, you know, the years that he's been there, he's been such an influential player. And for, for, for him, you know, getting to this last game of the season, such a big moment for him and put so much more weight on this on this game for him. And, you know, the guys on his team will be, you know, getting behind him to try and get him this, to, the, to that point. I guess now playing that a bit as well, not over playing the importance of it, although easier said than done. He's going to be instrumental, Kieran, in the battle of the bigs up against Josh Sharma, who was in the BBL Defensive Team of the Year. What makes Sharma such an effective presence? Sharma changes every single shot in the paint. Like he, he is so great. Like even if he doesn't get a block shot, he is changing the shot. You know, you have to put the ball up high. The interesting thing about this matchup for me is Dan Nelson Henry has the ability to play away from the basket and he's a great distributor of the ball. If he can find a way to draw Sharma out, it'll open the paint up for the Western Riders. We know how great they are at three point shots, but if they can get some scoring inside, and I think uh, Dan Nelson Henry is the player to be able to do that. Just adding that dual threat, do you think bench strength can be key here? Because 
both what we're expecting 20 minutes and change, right? We've seen Aaron Menzies step up recently for the Riders, particularly in the playoffs when called upon. Bench strength is obviously a key, key part of this because without a bench, you're not going to be a London Lions team. So, you know, we know how strong uh, London Lions are, strength in numbers. But, uh, Darren Nelson, Andre Menzies, it's going to be a team effort who's going to be able to do it, uh, find a way to penetrate the, the Lions defence. OK, perhaps unsurprisingly, Drew looking at the point guard head-to-head, the battle of the floor generals. First things first, Drew, talk us through their contrasting styles. Well, first of all, what a Christmas gift for both of these teams, both mid-season acquisitions at the point guard position. That's the most important position on a team. But where they differ is, is how they attack. Carrington Love, he's more bouncy, getting into the creases, feeding shooters are dropping it off to Darian Nelson Henry. On the other side, Jordan Taylor, he just straight to the point. He likes to get to his spots, pull up and shoot or he likes to throw the lob to Sharma, a great matchup in store. We focus a lot, inevitably, on offense, but what about their defensive smarts? Who has the edge there? Oh, that's a tough one. Both of them like to get down and dirty, but I got to give the edge to Carrington Love. Was third in the nation in steals in his college days, and also in the BBL, he's been a pest on the ball as well. And Carrington Love, as Drew suggested, came in midway through the season. Do you feel that he's really starting to acclimatize now, that he's really starting to find his bearings? It's no coincidence that Leicester Riders are playing their best basketball now as Carrington Love is getting the, into game fitness. You know, he we saw glimmers of it earlier on, but he's got a lot more consistent. He's a lot more, you know, like focused on on eye on the prize. He can get get to his spots, but also play at both ends of the court. That's it. When Carrington Love is playing well, the Leicester Riders have been playing well. All right then, uh, it is of course a big occasion here at the O2, and of course it wouldn't be a major championship final without the national anthem. Let's hear it. If you are able, please we get up standing for the British National Anthem. some noise for the British Imperial Military Band and Classical Reflection. Classical Reflection in the British Imperial Military Band supporting them. A fine rendition of God Save the King. Right, let's look at the team comparisons and the head-to-heads because there are some fascinating things that jump out here. When you look at the numbers and you see how close these two teams are, particularly offensively, they're prolific and efficient. They protect the ball well. But the clear advantage, Kieran, with London is twofold, defense and bench. And those are two elements that are typically associated to a rider's Paternostro side. Yeah, exactly. So they they just take it to an extra level. And that's the thing, the the riders are still right there. It's just that London Lions have found a way to advance and be that that stepping stone to to, 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 uh, supersede the Leicester riders. But Rob Paternostro has been here. He knows what it takes to win. And I'm sure they are gunning for victory tonight. How will Leicester look to break down this Lions defense, this formidable Lions defense? Is it all about establishing that deep shot early? Yeah, definitely. I think that the one thing that Leicester Riders does really well is shoot the three ball. And if they can consistently move the ball and dribble, drive, kick out threes, I think that will give them the advantage. You all know Rob Paternostro pretty well. Obviously, you played in the league against him. We've worked with him in the broadcast booth alongside him. What is he going to be saying to his players right about now? Because even though he downplays it, Drew, he's obviously got to be smarting that he's got a very strong riders team here that at the moment hasn't won anything. So how is he going to be motivating this riders team to get over the line? There won't be much that he'll be saying because he would have said that all during the week. He will say out there, guys, go out there, play loose, have fun, go out there and execute, and don't be afraid of the moment. Two teams that are so hard to choose between them ultimately. What does this come down to? What are the keys to the game for you? Keys to the game, you know, 
it's a tough place to shoot, as we saw in the, the last game, in the women's game there. If the riders can get going from three-point so shots and three keep it close, I think they really have a real chance of winning this today. Now, gentlemen, you started the season making predictions. Some of them went quite well, I have to say. Others, well, we won't bring those up right about now. Let's wrap things up with predictions. Which way is this one going to go? Wow, put me on the spot. I will say this. If the Leicester Riders can get to the free throw line, which they have all playoffs, 20 a game, and they can get that three ball going, I think we might be in store for an upset. The Riders upset, says Drew Lasko. What about you, Mike? i, I, I got to stick with my gut here. The London Lions have been doing it all season long. Coach of the year right there, Ryan Schmidt. Going London Lions. All right, the tiebreaker, Kieran. Did you know how Leicester won in the league? No, anyway, I I'm going to go with London Lions. All right, there we go. We are almost set for the big one of what a game it promises to be. The reigning playoff champs squaring off against the all-new league champs. And tip-off is coming next. We're all set here at the O2, moments away from tip-off and the very best of British basketball to entertain this sellout crowd in London. Both teams looking to get their hands on the last piece of silverware available. The anticipation is palpable. Game on. And guiding you through, Ant Rowe and Dan Rownage. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, a big crowd in the O2 today. And Ant... This is what you play for to be in the last game of the season. Last year's champions against this year's league champions going head to head. Let's have a look at the starting five. And Zubcic been playing a lot of center for the uh, Lions this year. He's key and so too Taylor in the back. Court. Well, Zubcic is six foot 11, so he can get away with playing center. But what he does is he stretches the floor because he likes to shoot that jump shot, particularly from beyond the perimeter. Jordan Taylor has been that 
perfect piece of the puzzle to guide this team through the offensive woods. Ruban also into the starting lineup for the Lions. For the Leicester Riders, a more predictable starting five for them. Darian Nelson Henry, his final game of his career. Well, it's the last chance to lose, and big things can happen when you get that opportunity. So look for Nelson Henry to go out with a bang, but it's been Mr. Consistent for me. Zach Jackson, 16 points per game, and he steps up big in the big moments for this Riders team. Here we go then, 40 minutes to decide the playoff champions. It's the Leicester Riders and the London Lions. The top two in British basketball this season, but which will be celebrating come the final buzzer? It is the Riders, the defending champions who beat London here last season, who get the first possession of the game. Jackson trying to get it into Nelson Henry. Great pass, great catch. Wow, great pass, great catch, great finish. He caught the ball underneath the rim, but he was able to jump through the defender and maneuver for the soft finish. Good start. Herban sneaking back door, squeezes it in. Wow, two equally good finishes. If this is a, a slice of what things to come, then we're in for a ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Jackson round to love. Loving goes to the low post. Nelson to the high. Five on the shot clock. Trying to find Lee, but Oni's in the way. This is what this team can do defensively so long. Best transition three. Gets his own rebound. Oni down the lane for the two-handed throwdown. Well, the offensive rebound, they give him a second chance opportunity. And the Riders defense saw him. Fell asleep. Oni with a clear path there to the basket. Taylor keeping the ball out of Love's hands, so Whelan brings it forward. Jackson feeds Nelson Henry, who's bumped, couldn't quite finish, but he will shoot too. Well, they fed the big man early, and Nelson Henry would probably want that one back. He had really good positioning inside, but the bump was just enough there to put him off the shot. The left-hand hook shot, but it's a good positive start here for Nelson Henry. Well, Drew Laska has joined us in commentary. Leicester going to the man who's playing his final game, and he's, well, I was about to say, certainly started well, but he misses the free throw as I say that. Yeah, it's very clear the Leicester Riders game plan, go inside often and early, take advantage of the strength advantage that they have with Nelson Henry. But on the other side, the London Lions look very bouncy. As you can tell, no players played over 30 minutes in this playoff, so Let's see how that plays out in in this 40 minutes here. Taylor brings it across mid-court. Zucic, room for the three. In and out, and Loving with the rebound. And that's what he likes to do. The difficulty in guarding that is Carrington Love, who's about six foot two, contesting that against a six foot 11. Zucic can get that shot over the defender with ease. Love, nice kick out to Loving for three. Little short, Taylor with the rebound. And that's what Love does, likes to get in those creases, creating open shots for teammates. Lester Riders, we talked about at the top of the show, got to knock those shots down. Here's Oni in the corner. Urban with the offensive rebound, blows the put back, and then throws the ball away. Oh, wow, what a pass though from Jordan Taylor. Jordan Taylor and Carrington Love, they, they, they have the same similar games in that regard. They like to penetrate in the heart of the defense and then kick out to open shooters in the corner. And that was a phenomenal pass. It doesn't... It's not converted, it doesn't go down, but if he keeps getting his teammates good shots like that, then this London, London, London Lions offense is going to be, be, be flowing. Nelson Henry spins into a double team, and that will be a jump ball. And uh, Nelson Henry is saying he's stepped on the line, but if he steps on the line, it's still a jump ball if two players are holding the ball. Yeah, and that was a great coaching adjustment from the line and line, sending the double there from the baseline. Jordan Taylor gets his hand in the cookie jar, forces the turnover. He is out of bounds, but if two players have the ball, hands on the ball, it is a jump ball in by rule. Wow, what a professional basketball player, I didn't know that rule. I would have been screaming the same thing. Oh, nice pass, difficult catch, fouls on the floor. Carrington Love called for it. 
And we know the talent that both of these teams have, but keep an eye out on the chess match from both of these coaches, Rob Paternostro, who's been there and done that. And Coach Ryan Smith was in this environment last year behind the bench, so comes in with a little bit of experience. Well, another pull pass, Wheeler running it back. Wheeler finishing strong at the rim. With a foot speed there, Patrick Wheeler just won out there, and then he had the pose to go right at Aaron Best. Good finish. Taylor has it knocked loose by Love. That'll stay with London. Well, when asked the question, who's better defensively, it's a really difficult answer because Jordan Taylor and Carrington Love equally have those quick hands that are always looking to disrupt the opposing offensive player. Look at that ball denial there as well from the out of bounds. Taylor gets past his man, high off the glass, and he gets the roll. Wow, we talked about it. Jordan Taylor likes to get to his spots and take what the defense gives him. That time, gave him the left-hand drive. Love going quick, can't finish. Gang rebounded by the Lions. Good change of pace there from Carrington Love, but he wasn't able to finish. That's a shot he's going to have to make over those long defenders today. Oh, they've lost Oni again, and this time he makes some pay. And Karen Achara talked about it at the top of the show. Which side of Oni would we see today? Because if we see the offensive status that he, we know that he equips, it'll be a long day for the Leicester Riders. This is a player, of course, who's used to playing in this environment three, almost three years in the NBA. So this is a, an environment, the fans, the, the, the arena that he, he probably feels comfortable with. Oh. Suddenly the uh, floor opened up for Mark Loving there. Another man used to the big occasion, Mr. Ohio State, Mark Lovin. He's a guy that he's going to have to have a performance today in order for this Riders team to compete. Urban spinning, kicks back out to Oni. Knocked away, stolen away by Love. Is that an unsportsmanlike? Referees look at each other. He's in transition. It's called a push. And that's why I chose Karen to love for the second time. Getting those sneaky hands in there at that time, able to take the ball away from Oni and force the foul. Great play there. Well, he was in front of him, I think, was the saving grace there for VA Oni. Luke Nelson checks into the game for the first time. Well, that's not a good pass. He's stolen away by Oni. Ruban chasing it back, and he laid in for two. Ruban there on the open floor. You see his size playing the advantage. Six foot eight was able to just skip over and lay the ball over Love. Love going hard to the hole. That won't count for Carrington Love as he takes the foul and gets the bonus free throw. And over the past two months, the Leicester Riders playing their best basketball of the season. Why? Because this guy here, Carrington Love, has brought his offense to the party. We know what he does defensively, but offensively he's been so much better and it's been a plus for the Leicester Riders. Well, we said, didn't we, that Leicester Riders' ceiling was as high as Carrington Love's ceiling, and you're right, Drew, there's been a, a, a strong correlation between him playing better and the Leicester Riders even more so dangerous on both ends of the floor. Well, he will get a breather now as Kimball McKenzie checks in for the first time. Tariq Philippa came in for London during that stoppage as well. Tariq Phillips played every game in the playoffs for this London Lions team as well, which is a credit to himself coming back from a knee, in, knee injury which required surgery. Well, it was originally a season ending, but he managed to get back a few weeks early. He plucked it away for a last of all, but not only did he get back a few weeks early, he's actually contributed to the team. You don't normally see that. You come back just before the playoffs and you think the guy's going to sit on the end of the bench and not play, Drew. Well, the playoffs is not the place that you want to test out an injury like <laughs> no. an ACL, so that says a lot about that guy and his character and his work that day. Tipped in. I don't know whether Jackson or Nelson Henry got the touch on that. Well, I don't think riders will care. <laughs> They've got two Red jerseys, they're attacking the offensive glass, a nice putback. Oh, they've given it to Nelson Henry on the stats. Here's Phillip off the glass, and I think there's a foul on Zubchich. Couldn't quite see what happened, but Whelan ended up on the floor. 
first uh, entry to the game for well Zubcic has only just realized the foul's gone against him and we've seen that look before from Zuba there a look of confusion and as he heads to the bench there he does use that a lot <laughs> Menzies into the game for the first time for Leicester. So impactful in the first leg of the semi-final. Big screen set by him as well. Loving backing down, trying to find room. He's blocked by Sharma. He needs to go straight back up here from Menzies. There's a foul, is there? Oh. Luke Nelson protesting his innocence, but the foul against him. Wow, look at this. Josh Sharma, rim protector, perfectly timed. Because if he's a, sec a half a second later there, it's a goal ten because the ball's already on its way down, but perfect timing there, a block shot for Sharma. And a defensive team of the year, which is well-deserved from Sharma, as you mentioned there, and has been a game-changer inside the paint in regards to blocking shots and changing shots as well. Well, London uh, over the limit, I think, for this quarter, which is why this is two free throws for Menzies. Oh, it's a quick foul picked up here from the Lions, and you don't want to send the best free throw shooting team to the line early. I mean, look, the example isn't isn't exemplified by Aaron Menzies, who's not one of those key key shooters, but you know, some really good free throw shooters on the court right now for the Riders. And yeah, this is both. Ooh, Sharma just bobbled it for a second, but London do come up with it. Mackenzie getting in the way, so already keeps the ball, kicks round. Long two, just towed the line there, knocks it down for Philip. Excellent defense there from the Riders, good on board defense from Kimball McKenzie, and it was a good contested shot, but Tariq Phillip just made the claim there to being better and knocks it down. Whelan, top one for three, back iron. Jackson going up for it, but only coming down with it. Philip, nice pass to Sharma, who's fouled by Menzies, and will shoot two. It's a nice job there by Tariq Phillips there, getting into the teeth of the defense and forcing a little sho shovel pass there to Josh Sharma. Well, he draws the foul from Aaron Menzies and heads to the line for two. Clear foul there, and do you want Menzies just to be straight up there, or at least just jump straight up and, and challenge that shot instead of leaning over there into the into the offensive player? Had a Coyer and Ward Hibbert into the game for the first time. And we talked about the chess matches from the coaches. Also, both of these teams equip the best benches in the league can go eight deep nine deep whatever you need so it's going to be a very interesting back and forth between both of these teams today Sharma makes the second London with some full court pressure Mackenzie down to Adekoya Zips it across to Jackson, who just stepped on the line. Great pass out the post as well from Tulu Adekoya, and that's what you'll get from him. He likes to play sporadic, sporadic minutes at the five, but they've got Menzies and Tulu Adekoya on the court at the same time here, so is going to have to look to shoot the basketball from the perimeter as well to keep the space in for the Riders. Phillip spinning, blocked from behind, traveling violation went up and down with it. Great defense there by Patrick Whelan, holding his ground and then timing the shot there from Phillips, ultimately turning into a turnover. Evan Walsh into the final for the first time. And what a run he's had. Evan Walsh started the season on the bench, got his opportunity and took full advantage of it. Now he's in this Leicester Riders rotation, but more importantly, has the trust of Rob Padanastro. And contributing as well. Here's Jackson for three. Off the mark, rebound Ward Hibbert. He's an interesting factor as well. Josh Ward Hibbert, former Leicester Riders player. He's having a good run in the playoffs as well. He's forced his way into having more minutes, 18 minutes a game, but he's averaging 10 points per game in playoff basketball. Good work from Menzies with the rebound. There's going to be a foul on Sharma. He's just trying to help him 
out of bounds. And uh, Aaron Menzies again will go to the free throw line. And to your point, and Ward Hibbert, a guy, the only guy on the London Lions roster that was in this environment last year, but he didn't touch the court. But that just goes to show his worth that they can prove in over the course of the season and here, early entered in here in the first quarter. What a dangerous thing for the Lions to every every player likes to put in a big performance against a former employer, maybe a former team. So you know, look out for Josh Ward Hibbert to inflict some damage here. And Aaron Menzies' troubles on the free throw line continue. 0 for 3 now for him at the free throw line. Well, a lot of I'll go here, you go there. Players swapping backwards and forwards. And as one person moves, the other person reacts. It's a 52% free throw shooter in the season. And this is both his 0 for 4. We talked about the importance of the Leicester Riders getting to the free throw line, getting there 20 times per game in these playoffs. But the difference is they've been making them, and so far tonight, starting off 0 for 4. Taylor off the mark. That's what Menzies does do well. Walsh down to Adekoya. An offensive foul. Oh, I must admit, I was watching that unfold, and I didn't think it was an offensive foul. He had a significant advantage there down low against a smaller defender, but referee deemed too much contact there. Offensive foul, it's another turnover here for the Riders. 14-12, almost eight minutes gone in the opening quarter here in London. Well, he turns the corner, drives all the way to the rim, puts it in nicely. Wow, what a left hand drive there by Solo Ade. Finishes high over the seven footer and Menzies, and there's no player on the London Lions that's more improved than that guy, Mo Solo Ade. I agree, he's found himself a role of me on this team. Mo trying to force his way through. Sharma got the block. Taylor looking to attack. Oh, huge block from Menzies. Well, for all his trouble with the free throw line, he gives you so much in other areas of the game. This time, protecting the rim, perfectly timed block. This time from Menzies. And that's what you like to see out of your big man there saying, don't come here in this paint, get that stuff out of here. Bullock backs out. Now he looks to attack. Over to Taylor, steps into the three, short, chases down his own rebound, kicks to Sholawadi in the corner for the triple, in and out. Menzies at the second attempt gets it. Great work from Menzies, that's his third defensive rebound as well. He's preventing the offensive rebounds from happening. It's going to happen here from Adekoya, but he's able to get the ball in, but good intent nonetheless. Yeah, and a quick shot there from Kemble McKenzie, no one in offensive rebound in position, but on the other hand, that's a shot that he can normally make, been one of the bright spots here for the Leicester Riders all season long. Phillip, long two, he's good. Goodness me, this is a guy that's been out the whole season, but he's ended this game like he hasn't missed a beat, that's his second difficult shot today. And a six-point London lead. Kick ball by Sharma. That will put 14 seconds back on the clock for Leicester. It was down to five. Well, I think Coach Schmidt is just querying whether that last shot was a three or a two. It was definitely signaled to. And it's been confirmed as a two. Well, I'm to that point now where whatever referee Ed Ugansi says, I, I go with. You know, he's a he's a referee that's that's been fantastic for us in the British Basketball League, even so much so that he's had his recognition in European competition, refereeing at an extremely high level. He's well, discussing things over here now with the table. It's referee Unsworth who originally called the two. They're now at the table discussing as whether that last shot was a three or a two or not. And you can see there, Coach Smith, 
they're arguing his case because he knows this is a fine margin, a game of inches, and who knows, it might come down to that play right there late in the ball game. So I thought it was a two just because I, my, 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 my muscle memory of the play he had before was a, was a long two, so I thought he dribbled and stepped into it as a two. Well, they've given it as a three now. Well, it's into McKenzie, who's finding a little gap to the basket. Smart play there, and McKenzie's had a whole career of being that smaller guy, so if you see what he did there, he's jumped in towards the defender to use his body so he could leverage his reach there to finish the play. Here's Phillip for three. Seven points already for him. Oh, created by Jordan Taylor. We talked about it. Direct get to his spot, gets the ball to the hot hand. And he knocks it down for three. In fact, it's eight because he got that extra point on the previous three. Yeah, there was no question about that one, no. too. That was definitely a three. Walsh going into traffic is denied. And we're at the end of the first quarter here in the O2 Arena. And it is the league champions who are in front. Ten minutes played, London Lions 22, Leicester Riders 14. We will have the second quarter when we return. Welcome back to the O2. Just before the break, there was a three that was debated and eventually changed. It was originally given a two. He actually towed the NBA line. It was well behind the fever line, and they corrected that to three, and rightly so. And the great thing is that the referees came together, had a conversation with about it, and collectively came up to the right decision. Great job there. Love turning the corner quick. Getting underneath the block by Sharma. Wow, second block of the day from Sharma is equally as important because that's a basket saving block. Jackson for three from Rims, but it drops in. Wow, the Leicester Riders, you talk about needing that as Jackson gets the party started from behind the three point line for the Leicester Riders, where they are the best in the British Basketball League from that distance. Taylor throws it away. Can Sharma keep it in? Yes, he can. Five on the shot clock. Taylor with this foot speed mismatch. Can't take advantage of it, though. Riders did good there off the mixed match, didn't they? There was a bit of additional rotation there required to make sure that the man stayed in front of them. Love drives, kicks to Loving. Off the mark. Two good looks, though, 
first one was knocked down by Zach Jackson and Mark Lovin just wasn't able to replicate what his teammate did the play before. Offensive foul called against Phillip. It's Whelan hits the deck. It's just good defensive effort there from Patrick Whelan that gets over that screen and makes sure his body there is in the way. And Tariq Phillip there with a the slightest of pushes off, uh, push offs there with the forearm, but being too much contact there for the rest. Love a little hesitation. Uses the ring well to finish. Excellent job there from Curtis Love. Because sometimes psychologically, when you get blocked at the rim, you're a little bit more hesitant. But this time, he turned off his aggression and used the reverse. His best in the corner for three. Jackson with the rebound. Love. Here's Jackson. Room at the top. Misses the three. Another good look there by the Leicester Riders. A wide open look, and we talked about it. Got to make freeze, got to make free throw. Ooh, that's collision off the ball as the lane will count for Taylor. Jackson and Sharma on the floor, and it's the Leicester man who's been called for the foul. The London will get the points and possession. Disaster scenario for the Riders. Not only did they get scored on, it was an easy layup as well to the lane for Taylor, but also the foul means that. Lions will get possession here now, and uh, you see Zach Jackson just trying to move Sharma out the way there. And the Riders with an opportunity to tie it. The London Lions actually have a chance to go up by eight, so hopefully that doesn't put them in that situation. Shot clock getting low for London. Stolen, not quite by Jackson Ward. Hibbert gets it away in time, but misses. But an offensive rebound from Oni. Taking it in. He blows the layup, but that's uh, Ward Hibbert to tip it home. Wow, the persistence there on the glass. First from Oni, then Josh Ward Hibbert coming out of nowhere to tip that one back. Loving back to Nelson Henry. And rims out, but Loving gets the ball. And best call for the foul. It's one of those ones as well. You don't want the foul to be called if you're Mark Lovin. He had an advantageous position down low after getting over Aaron Best. The whistle's blown. Number two on Best. Great effort there by Loving to mix it up to show you that he's more than just a perimeter player. Can get down there and get down and dirty as well. Love, tough shot, got caught, and we'll shoot three. Wow, that's a terrible decision there by Jordan Taylor. Carrington Love not known for his three-point shooting, 25% to be exact, and that's a shot that you can live with if you're the London Lions, and the worst-case scenario is to send the best free-throw shooting team to the line for three. Carrington Love, a 64% free-throw shooter. Makes the first six points so far for him. He's actually Leicester's leading scorer. That's one thing about him. He's been a pass first guard since he's arrived at Leicester Riders and averaging over six assists a game in just 20 minutes per game of basketball, which is astonishing numbers in terms of the ability of him to distribute to his teammates. Two or three from the line, five points separating the teams. Zucci is putting it on the floor, get into the rim, and he might get three the old fashioned one. Zuba, my favorite player on the London Lions, loves to mix it up. He uses his seven foot frame there to take the Nelson Henry off the dribble and gets to his left hand and finishes strongly with his right hand. And that's what he can do. 
Coach Smith decided to start Zupcic today, and he's more versatile than a Josh Sharma, so he can take Nelson Henry off the dribble, he can shoot the free ball. It's a nightmare really for big guys to, to guard, but with him being 6'11", you can't put a guard on him. Well, that's, that's it. Yes, it is. It's a London ball. New course of turnover. Wow, the unsung hero there. You talked about it, and Josh Ward here, but a guy that sat on the bench there for 40 minutes last year, but now gets his opportunity. Taking full advantage there, mixes it up and causes the turnover. Championship caliber plays there from Josh Ward Hibbert. And this London Lions team have been so that when they've been good, it's because they've been playing defensive as a collective unit. At the moment, they're playing good defensive basketball. At the moment, it gets this very talented offensive Warriors team. Well, that's a great catch by Ward Hibbert. Looked like it was going out of bounds, but he's turned it into two points. Wow! Defense, offense, getting it done there. And his teammate only there showing his appreciation. Zuba. Great job. 6.39 to go in the first half. London lead by nine. Time out to Leicester. And earlier we caught up with Mark Lovick to see how things are going. Starting off with that semi-final against Bristol. Um, yeah, Bristol is a, a heck of a, a heck of a team. Um, we had a pretty big, pretty big game versus them at home. They were able to uh, chop down our, our lead from 20 to about seven, so it made the last game really close. And uh, they played with a lot of energy, but we were able to cover the spread and, and come out with a victory. It would mean a lot uh, for us to win this game. Um, London's a, a very good team. Before the season, I'm pretty sure they were favorites to be here and not only be here, but win. So um, it would mean a lot for us to get this victory and uh, bring that trophy back home. Key thing for us in this final uh, would be probably limiting limiting their transition and just making shots. Uh, we, we weren't able to make um, a lot of threes the last time we played them, but it was still relatively a close game. Um, so, you know, focusing on obviously making shots, but limiting them in transition as well. Yeah, there's a lot of belief in our locker room. Um, we, we feel confident versus anybody. Uh, there's There's been plenty of games, obviously, we've lost, um, but we feel like some of those wounds have been self-inflicted, and uh, we're very confident going into this game that we can get the job done. Well, they've cut London to only two fast break points, but they have not uh, managed to shoot the ball very well. Only trying to convince the referee that was off a Leicester player on the way out. He left it. Oh, there's a turnover. And here's only in transition again, and he'll get some points. Well, it's off the pressure and again. London Lions this time are out to the races. And we just saw from the WBBL final, you don't have to shoot the ball well to win a basketball game, Dan. And this right now, the London Lions energy on defense has propelled them to an 11-point lead. Jackson. Master in an 11 point hole. Jackson getting to the rim through the contact. And one. We talked about it pre show. Zach, action. Zachson, the best player on the left of Riders all season long, says, Not so fast, London Lions, as he squeezes his way in the paint for two. Well, the neutralizer this time responded after a potential run there for the London Lions. And Zach Jackson, 16 points a game this year have been so vital to this Riders team's success. Big play there from him. Second foul on Zubchuk, he sits down. And Jackson can't make the free throw. It is an unusual gym in terms of the sight lines. And it takes a bit of getting used to it. Of course, they don't get a lot of time to get used to it. Here's Urban driving to the roll, to the finger roll. As smooth as they come, you see him curl off that screen and he carries on his trajectory towards the rim, using his body to prevent the block. Nice finish. Nelson Henry wants it inside, he eventually gets it, and the foul is on Ward Hibbert. Wow, the London Lions draw, uh, give a foul there, but the activity on the ball and off the ball is impressive. All five guys on a string in help side position. And this time of year, that's what gets it done, being active on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, shooting the basketball is contagious. One of the best of times. It's even worse than the free throw line. Riders have to turn around their fortunes here. 
four for 12 now wow. from the three from the free throw line. Well, you said at the top, Drew, they've been getting to the free throw line, and that's a key for them, but it's only a key if the free throws go in. Well, this is the worst time to be having you worst game from the free throw line like you said Dan you only got 40 minutes so you don't have a lot of time to warm up to the environment to the gym or the baskets at that just to put it into perspective as far as this team shoots 80 percent from the free throw line league leaders they're far from that so far today only nice take and there's a whistle there Nelson Henry's put his hand up Who haven't been to the free throw line much today? We'll get two more. They're only one for three, by the way. Yeah, well, you take one for three instead of five for yeah, 13, yeah, wouldn't you? And again, this is a London Lockers team that's up by 10, so they're finding other ways to, to put points on the board. Most notably, they've hit some threes, three for 10 in the perimeter. Their right is a one for six. Well, Karen talked about it pre-game about which version would we see from Oni. So far, 10 points, four rebounds, and two steals. Probably playing some of the best basketball we've seen him domestically all season, while also being a test on the defensive end. Great start. Second one rattles in for Mia Oni. This is how good this team is. I mean, he's an NBA draft pick three years in the NBA and I mean, at times he's got lost on the roster or trying to find his identity and it just credits the, the caliber of player that this London Lions team have, had, or have got. McKenzie way too long for three. Jackson steals the ball away. Head fake. Can't convert. He wants a foul. No whistle coming. Wow. Great effort to get the ball back but it wasn't enough. The length again bothering Jackson on the finish. Now called on the pass. I think it's uh, Adekoya. Just um, see diving out there, caught him on the arm. I think it was the face. His second. Herban. Back iron. Sharma with the rebound. Philip, strong to the hole for another two, he's into double figures. Well, Coach Rob talked about it pre-game, limiting the London Lions to one shot, that's why, because a team that's this offensively talented, you can't give multiple opportunities there as Tyreek Phillips cleans up there. Love, nice pass, and foul by Sharma as he went for the jam. I really like that take from Zach Jackson though, a lot of players in the league would have shied away there, but Zach Jackson didn't. He tried to go up and over, arguably the best shot blocker in the league. And that could have, oh goodness me, I don't even know if that was a foul, just Sharma. Got a lot of the ball there. I think he got some of his head as well. <laughs> <laughs> but being a guard like, like myself, or a former I should say, there's nothing worse than every time you go in the paint, you know someone's going to be there swinging, jumping, looking to attempt to block your shot. And that's what... Sharma's been all season long for this London Lions defense. Jackson makes both free throws. Leicester hanging on here. Down 12 with four to play to halftime. Filler. Blocked by Love. Wow, this time Love. Showing us what he can do defensively above the, the rim. Good block. Love all the way to the basket. Jackson with the rebound, trying to find his way out. There's a foul in there on uh, to Herbert. Is he just Josh Arnold's presence yes. there, though? You know, nine times out of ten, that's just a put back way up, but he's just conscious of Josh Sharma being there. And instead of going straight back up, the pump fakes there. Josh Sharma's just standing tall. That's a seven footer, athletic seven footer at that. That's looking to swap your shot. It's a really 
typical remedy. It stays in the back of your head. Like I said, every time you go in the paint, you start second guessing yourself. When have you ever seen Love shoot an air ball layup? And then Zach Jackson being tentative in the paint where he's normally aggressive. Now he makes both and he'll get himself a little breather as Patrick Whelan will return. Well, we talk about this often, Dan. Finishing quarters in particular, this is the moment, finishing the half. So if the Leicester Riders can close the gap a little bit, go into halftime with a little momentum, it will be all worth it. Only step back three. Off the mark, loving flying through the air for the rebound. Yeah, not a great offense there for the London Lions. Lack of movement there, lack of ball movement. No. Contested shot. Mackenzie, a little fall away mid range is short. Back to the way from Loving. London have it. Mooney trying to use his size on the fall away. Rims out. Good look there from Oni using his size advantage. Phillips trying to protest that the fouls on the floor. It doesn't matter because they're over the limits. It's going to be two free throws. It was on the floor, but it's still short. Yeah, and London don't need to do that. They, you know, again, they've got size and length inside contesting shots. You don't need to foul and put good free throw shooters on the line. Well, that's his second as well. So he'll sit down as Wheeler shoots two. 86% free throw shooter. We've seen Patrick Whedon's confidence grow. He had an injury which took him out of, of his rhythm, and you could see that game after game was becoming stronger. And playoff basketball has been contributing. 10 points a game for him. And in games like this, this is where you see Patrick Whedon step up. GB International will, of course, want to make sure he's counted for his performances on stages such as this. Oh, he throws it back out. Taylor, five on the shot clock, he goes to the rim. It's a long way round and the foul is called. Again, Jordan Taylor being very direct in his pursuit to the rim, getting to his spot, forcing the Jackson up in the air and then drawing his body into the defender. Well, he'll head to the line for two. Second foul on Jackson. A number of players on two in the game. Jordan Taylor, just that experience and veteran leadership he's brought since he's came to this squad. To University of Wisconsin, same as his teammate Sam Decker, and he's played all over the world, Italy, Israel, Germany, Turkey, France, Japan, Romania, just to name a few, the list is, is pretty long, and that's the level of experience he brings. Well, he made both. Loving will come in for Jackson. They don't want Jackson to pick up a third or half time. Mackenzie into the key, out to Love for three. Mackenzie trying to fight for the rebound, but Solowati able to keep him on his back. It's another good look for the three-point line as well, that Riders are going to have to figure out a way now to start changing the conversions, because the quality of shots are getting a good, but they're one for eight now. More away from their 37% what they've been accustomed to shooting this year. Taylor from the free throw line up to the Jordan Taylor just taking over now. Eight points personal for him, as well as three assists. Robin hitting the deck as he kicks the ball out. Mackenzie through the hands of Nelson Henry, who keeps it in, but only to Pony. Knocked away by Mackenzie. It will be a less of all. Good effort from McKenzie there. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to be an active pest in that time. Kimball McKenzie's sheer determination caused that turnover for the Lions. 
eight turnovers now for the Lions. So it hasn't been a, they haven't looked after the ball particularly well in the earlier stages of this game. Robin gets it back from Nelson Henry, looking for room on the baseline, throws it away. Taylor in transition, oh he loses it. Nelson Henry with the head fake, stripped away, still has it, can convert, tips it in. Wow, persistence there, Nelson Henry to stay with the play, great defensive effort there from Moshe Malade, and then you had Josh Sharma, Sharma looking to squat the ball, but Nelson Henry's persistence paid off there. Ten minutes, uh, ten points, sorry, in the final minute, you see, got all ball on that one, and then just at the second attempt they will tip that one home. Wow, great play there from Sholawade. Again, it's Josh Sharma's presence, just enough there to make Nelson Henry hurry that left hand shot, which missed. Six foot eleven, leg to be able to tip that one home. Well, let's start. Uh, downtown they haven't really done the things we said at the beginning they need to do they have to shoot the ball well they're one of eight from three point range nine of 22 for two 11 for eight 11 for 19 from the free throw line they've got to the free throw line they've left eight points out there it could be a two point game i don't know if he shoots 100 but you know what i mean no i think you hit the nail on the head dan there's the certain criteria that the riders had to meet today to not just compete with another line but to beat them they had to shoot close to their their, their averages in three point field goal percentage but more importantly is that the, the free throws as well they've got to have those that, that 80 percent range as well when you're the last to riders you have to be closer to being perfect than, than when you are the favorites coming into this game but you are the london lions and so far it hasn't been a perfect execution for the riders less than a minute to play london with the ball from the end Leicester showing a full court press here it's like a 2-2-1 two, two, zone it's a bit of a show more than anything else. Taylor throwing it up. Is there a foul on loving there? Sure, certainly the pass was not in the direct in the vicinity of Sharma because he was being held. Sharma will have a trip to the free throw line now. And look, I don't mind that foul as well because if Sharma jumps up there and slams one home, this crowd are ignited, which you you can feel the the, the 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 sort of the home court advantage here as well to the London Lions. Of course, we're in the capital, and any of those neutrals are, are maybe leaning towards the the London on the on the jersey. So you get a big play like that in this building. The roof can rock it off. Back to 12. Should be probably one offense each left in this first hand. Whelan puts it on the floor, kicks it off to Nelson Henry, who drops it in for two. Excellent penetration there to Whelan. It was perfectly time cut as well. Nelson Henry didn't cut too early. He waited for Whelan to get to the short corner and then made his move. Tony just runs into Whelan there. That's going to be an offensive foul. Not a good play there. I think Tony went a little bit too quickly there. Four seconds left for the Riders here to try and cut this deficit. What did you say, Dan? It was a blatant, wasn't it? Just ran right through Patrick Whelan. So a few words for the referee on the way out as Ward Hibbert comes in for him. Mackenzie running. Trying to create some room for the fall away and strings it on the butter. Kimball McKenzie with a little bit of momentum and he turns to the riders fans and says, come on! And they reply in kind, but it's the London Lions who will go into the half with the advantage here. 44 points to 36. London lead. Well, for all the battles there in that second quarter, as the left of Riders who have something to cheer for heading into half time. Great play, individual play from Kimball McKenzie. Look at this outstretched 
contest there from Ruben, but it didn't matter because that fadeaway was enough. And it dropped right through to the bottom of the net. Kimball McKenzie for two. Well, that is a little momentum play going in, but you'll see the numbers on the right-hand side have to go up for Leicester. 45, 12, and 57 is not going to be enough for them to win this ball game. No, it's not, Dan. And you know, credit to London Lions as well, because they do a really good job of defending the three-point and the line. So their opposers, their, their, their opponents uh, shoot 28% from the, the three-point line. They've done a really good job of making things difficult for the riders here today. Well, four or five shooting for 10 points. Terry Phillip is with Drew. Tariq, you had ACL surgery the beginning of the year. You got 10 points here in the biggest game of the season. Where did you, where did you pull from during the tough times of recovery to be able to put yourself in this situation? Uh, I just leaned on my teammates, man. My teammates, my family, uh, the Long Lions organization, the treatment staff. Um, yeah, they just helped me rise to the occasion. And you held the Riders to 36 points here in the first half with the team for the offensive stars. How has the coach been able to get you guys to buy in on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, he says make the ball do the work. Uh, we have a lot of talented guys who can put the ball in the hole. Um, once we get the defense moving from side to side, we kind of get what we want, and we get good shots off that. And speaking of the coach, what message will he be prioritizing at half to allow you guys to walk out of here with a chip? Another 20 minutes, another 20 minutes, and we hoist the trophy. That's the message we'll send. Well, another 20 minutes, you'll be closer. Thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you. Well, the Lions are halfway there to the treble, of course. The trouble that the Riders won last season, and they are the reigning playoff champs, so they're not going to let this one go easily. And that Kimball McKenzie bucket at the death makes this an eight point four game at the half. Reaction analysis coming next. Half-time entertainment. Young T and Bugsy getting the fans hyped up. You're enjoying that, Tucker. You yeah, maybe can grab the mic and get involved. All right, you got to Got to get involved with uh, Bugsy. Strike a pose, Mike Tuck. Strike a pose. Glad to join that. And the London Lions fans enjoying what they have seen in the first half. 
carrying an eight-point lead into the locker room. The Riders started strong, but this guy, Mia Oni, had a big, big first half. And let's start with him. Into double digits, Kieran Achara, 11 points, leading scorer on the court. And some electrifying plays, galvanizing his team and the fans. Well, we talked about it at the top. Mia Oni needed to come come correct and he did that you know stacked with a lot of energy really got the lines going you know big dunks big steals just played some great basketball offensively particularly but i guess it's this lions defense that has particularly stepped up because we talked about this threat from downtown from the riders all season long and yet they've landed just one for the three-point range yeah one for eight that's what we said before the game if they want to have a chance to, to come out on top on this game they need to knock down the outside shot I think they've been doing a good job of moving the ball around, but that three-point shot is just not falling for them in this first half. I guess glass half full. Riders fans will be looking at this. It's an eight-point ball game. Neither Whelan or Jackson, who are prolific from downtown, have really got going. So they could go on a run. Suddenly, this is game on. Easily. And, you know, and that's, what that, that's going to be the message in the locker room. It's about we're not playing our basketball. You know, they're 11 of 19 from the free-throw line. They're the best free-throw shooting team in the, in the league. They're not clicking from the three-point line. They're still in this game. Tariq Phillip had a big half for the Lions as well. And it's great to see as well. We heard him chat to Drew at the half. As Drew discussed, he's been injured for much of the season. What an occasion for him. A homegrown star, back fit and playing and playing so well. Yeah, and you know, he's a guy who's missed a lot of season this year. And it's good to see him out there. And he's kind of just picking up where he left off. Super aggressive plays and super efficient all over the board. It's a great point, actually, that aggression that we're seeing from Odie from uh, Tariq as well. It seems to be running through this Lions side. They're hyped and they're definitely up for this. That's it, and this is it. And the biggest stage, you know, the shots might not be dropping, but it's the ones who have that will, that grit. And those two have really stepped up and, you know, and played a massive role in this Lions first half. We're talking about energy and flipping that to the riders. I think Carrington Love is probably the player that we're seeing that the most from. Offensively, certainly. And, and I guess he warmed up as the game went on, showing flashes of what he's capable of, but the Riders need more from him, don't they? He's got so many moves in his bag, you know, he's, he finds a way to score in so many ways, but he's so aggressive, and if they want to have a, a big second half, he's going to be one of the players that's really going to have to step up. How key is that bucket that we saw from Kimball McKenzie at the end going to be, just in terms of motivation, momentum going into the locker room? You know, definitely, you know, you get you get the ball in Kimball McKenzie's hands, and he makes that big shot right before the half to cut the lead that little bit more, and that just gives that, instills that belief in the rest of the team. Hey, we're not out of this. We can still do this. Take that momentum, that last little second of momentum and bring it into that third quarter. Well, it is wide open here at the O2. You can guarantee that this Riders team are not going down without a fight. The eight points eminently doable. So really looking forward to the second half that we have in store. Now, those of you watching earlier would have seen at the halftime of the WBBL playoff final, we had uh, some of our plays of the season. It was 10 till 6. We'll get ready, sit back, and enjoy our top five. Decker with seconds running down! Oh my goodness! What a dunk from Sam Decker! Closing seconds of the course, Sam Decker pops up with the highlight play. Walked up to Sharma! Oh my! Josh Sharma! What a finish on the alley oop! Sharma just takes off. Up, up to Bent! Who jumps it in? Goodness, he just jumped in between two red jerseys. Oh, he turns two. it on to oh. the backboard to himself! Oh, have you ever seen anything like it? Incredible! Three of this game like an all-star game! What is going on right now? He's getting harassed by Evans. They still have fouls to give Cheshire. Here's Sloan to the basket. Out to Oluas. Sloan in the corner for the win. Oh! Can you believe it? David Sloan wins it on the buzzer. And the Caledonian Gladiators go wild. David Sloan took the biggest shot of his professional career. 
now somewhere in the multiverse where David Sloan doesn't drop that trophy winning three. Taj Green wins that hands down, but there was only going to be one winner. I mean, you know, I was teetering with these decisions, but you know, David Sloan, big shot, big time in Glasgow. That was absolutely, I'm going to have to say again, Come on. disgusting. <laughs> certainly was. And just the pictures of you as well after that, that will stay with me with us forever. Brilliant stuff from David Sloan. And the Caledonia Gladiators, what a win for them. Who's going to take the title this afternoon? We'll find out in just a minute before we get the second half underway, though. I mentioned there are a lot of BBL legend, legends, BBL greats in the house at the O2 today. Well, Drew has caught up with an old friend, courtside. Yeah, we got my boy, number 44, Ramon Fletcher in the house, 2015 playoff MVP. We hear you have some news for us. Yeah, I just want to officially announce my retirement from the BBL, from the game of basketball. So what perfect way to do it at the playoff final. Wow. After 310 total assists this season, a single season record, obviously plenty, plenty left in the tank. Why now? I mean, physically I feel I can go, you know, many, many years. But mentally I think it was, you know, it was about that time. You know, it's been a two-year buildup. I'm talking to my mom, my sister, AG, and everybody close to me, you know, even yourself. Um, we feel like the opportunity that I do have coming up is something that I couldn't pass on. Well, talking about that opportunity, we know nothing's more daunting than walking away as a professional athlete. What's next for Ramon Fletcher? Oh, man, I can't say right now, but in the next week, everybody will know what I'm doing. And, you know, I will be moving back stateside, so it's something to do back home. So I'm looking forward to it. My mom is super happy, especially on Mother's Day. <laughs> well, this is a place that we've been to many times. I mean, what would you miss most about the BBL? I mean, it's just, look at the fans. Look, when we first came to the O2, the crowd wasn't like this. And just constantly, every single year, it's been a buildup. More people getting involved. Even though three quarters of the, the arena is for London, it doesn't matter. It's seats and it's people in the seats. So just to see that progression every single year. And I just wanted to make an impact the best way that I could. Because when I first came in the league, there weren't any small guards. There were six four, six five. So if there's any person that I can touch, if it's a kid that think he's too short to play, I'm cool with that. One is all it takes. Well, Ramon, nine titles, six MVPs. You know your fans are going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. And everything that you've done for British basketball, you left it in great hands, my man. Thank you. I really appreciate it to everybody, especially the fans of Newcastle that's built me up and made me who I am. Thank you. And the fans of Manchester that accepted me. It wasn't easy coming from Newcastle, but I really appreciate it. And everybody that supports the BBL and me throughout my career, I want to say thank you. Thanks, Fletch. Nat, back to you. Thanks, Drew. He certainly made an impact, hasn't he? One of the BBL all-time greats. Oh, definitely. I've had the absolute pleasure of you know playing against him for many, many years. You know, Ramon Fletcher, just an absolutely legendary player in the BBL. Congrats on the uh, on the retirement, brother. I wish you all the best. And of course, Fletch and Drew go way back. They won so many titles together as well. So that was an incredibly emotional moment, of course, for Fletch in his career, in his life and uh, sharing the news with the nation, with the British basketball nation, through his old friend and partner in crime, Drew Lasker. Terrific to see. And he's going out, Kieran, on a high. Definitely. You know, that, this, this guy cost me so many finals. I'm, no, I still haven't forgiven him, but what a great player he has been for the BBL. And I'm, I'm so proud that he's already got opportunities. He's thinking about what's next for him and his family going forward. So great to see a player making that transition and uh, happy with the decision. Thinking about the emotions running through his head right now. What a way to bow out at the top. One of the greats, Ramon Fletcher, two-time league MVP, of course, and plenty of silverware in his locker. Speaking of which, one more piece of silverware to determine this season. What's Rob Padanostro saying to his team right now in the locker room? I think, you know, we've got to keep moving the ball, keep playing defense. But the one thing that stood out to me before the game was saying they need that underdog mentality. And, they're, you know, the Leicester Riders are a team that are not usually used to being the underdog. And that's something they got to embrace in this game. Be that underdog. Have that fight in you. Use that momentum to carry you through into the second half. Well, he has been down this road many times before and has been on the right side of the line when all's said and done. Can he spoil the London party and lead his riders to yet another title? It's an eight-point game. It is game on. And the second half is coming your way next.
We've got a ball game on our hands here. The Lions have an eight-point lead at the half, but we are talking about the reigning playoff champs, the Leicester Riders, who are not going down without a fight. Second half is about to get underway, so let's get back to our commentary team. Matt Rose and Dan Rowe. Thank you very much, Nat. Yeah, Leicester were in a bit of a hole last year on a couple of occasions in the playoff final. They found a way back then. Can they do it again here this year, Nat? And well, they had to do that in the semi-finals against the Bristol Flyers, didn't they? They had themselves a, a cushion going into game two, but that was eradicated from a very tough Bristol Flyers team. This Riders team dug deep, and they got it done. Can they do the same today? That's the question we're all asking, Dan. Well, a little mini huddle for them as they head out onto court. The ball will start in the hands of London, who have a 44-36 halftime lead. I mean, that can come into Florida's play as well. They've had some toast at uh, close contested games in the playoffs, where, whereas London Lions, they've, they've averaged 18 point victories in both of their quarterfinal and semi final matchups. Urban blows the layup and tips it out to Nelson Henry. Love back to Nelson Henry, gets his own rebound and is fouled by Taylor and will shoot two. Good start there, getting something positive towards the rim there for the Leicester Riders, but equally good contesting there from London Lions, even to the very last second there, nothing was gave, given easy and there wasn't an easy layup there for Nelson Henry. Well, we've been joining comms by a man who won MVP on this floor this seven years ago now, it doesn't seem that long ago, Mike. What do Leicester need to do to get back into this game? I think it's all about mentality at this point. Obviously, they're not shooting the ball well from three, but you got to have that mentality to keep shooting those shots, that confidence to keep shooting those shots, and then executing to create those shots, right? But uh, you said, I think, that Rob has instilled in these guys that they need that underdog mentality today. And we've seen glimpses of, glimpses of it, but this third quarter is going to be pivotal. Well, ninth miss free throw for Leicester there. The trail by seven. Taylor hard to the hole, kicks out. What a pass that is to Zubchik for three. It's a great pass, and what he has, he has a recipient and a long six foot eleven Zubchik who's ready to knock that shot down. Big play. Lean around the screen, drops it off to Jackson. Nice head fake for the two. Wow, what a pass there, Zach Jackson, sneaking away there in the dunker slot. Beautiful little pass for the easy two. And they've got to need Patrick Winnie to stay positive and attack in the rim. Good challenge from Loving. Love back to Jackson, fakes the three, takes the two. Front rim though. Only kicks Urban in the corner. Three for him as well. It's a guy you cannot help off, especially when he's in the corner. It's Vuto Ruben who shot 47% from the three-point line. Yes, 47. Remarkable from him. Unbelievable quick release on his jump shot. Again. Love quick to the rim and he's gonna get two free throws I think foul is on Zubchich you can't believe it there's that look again Dan <laughs> he's leading his innocence there and Carrington Love is oh, it's hard to hard to see but it wasn't a lot in it was there either well he's pointing up to the big screen but there is no video assistant referee so there's no point Oh, has he got a technical? I think Zubchich has got a technical. That's his fourth personal foul. Oh, they're going to surely have to take him out. So Whelan, there's no movement on the bench yet. Whelan will shoot the technical free throw. It's a huge call as well with him this fourth and he's just hit a big three as, as again remember he's, he's a really difficult matchup for the riders because of his, his length and his ability his versatility on the offensive end surely Zubchus is going to have to go to the, the bench here now I don't think coach Schmidt will want to risk him picking up a fifth foul in the third quarter well he wasn't keen to go to the bench was he no he wasn't <laughs> But they 
we've got to go back to mental toughness. You know, we've all been there and had fouls caught on us that, that, that weren't fouls and you just have to, uh, you have to accept it and move on to the next play. Yeah, it's tough, especially when you see the, the call that it was called on, but it's, it's situational, right? You have to know when to fight, when not, when to just shut up and accept it. Taylor. Beth driving hard, stumbling over. Wheeler's going to get called for the foul. Oh, some early whistles here in this third quarter, and both teams not best pleased. I don't see what Patrick Whelan's done there. He's coming back from the, the a p offensive player who's looking to make the contact. I don't see a foul there either. Best at the free throw line. London seven of nine from the free throw line today. Leicester, by contrast, to miss ten. You know, what a great season this Canadians had. Aaron Best, you know he's he's got recognition as well from good coaches across the league. Rob, Rob Patton Austria, even so much so putting him in his BBL team of the year. Aaron Best has been that leader and, and very consistent throughout league play and another whistle. When? Stoppage in play. I think there's something wrong on the floor down there. There's a damp patch or something down on the floor. Well, there's a lot of chatter going on while the floor's being wiped, that's for sure. There's a, there's a three point shot from Zubchich. Call for the foul at the other end. His protestation earned him a technical. He did have plenty to say, and you can see he's pointing to the big screen, but as I say, it's not going to get overturned on that. There's still a delay in the game down the on the floor drafted by the Toronto Raptors and had a excellent career in Europe since and he's a type of player you'd want on court again not just simply for his talents but because he's a mismatch problem for anyone who guards him oh, wow. big men really struggle to hang with his foot speed and versatility and ability to shoot the basketball from beyond the three-point line that's the biggest thing that stands out to me, his ability to shoot the three and also handle the ball, very under control, can pass well, nightmare for a bigger player to guard. I thought you were talking about yourself there for a second, <laughs> Mike. You know, <laughs> reminds me of Mike too. There we go. We're finally back underway here, London leading by 11. Oh, nice pass to Nelson Henry for the lay -in. It's a beautiful pass, excellent catch, and rearrangement there from Nelson Henry. Good play. Taylor squares up to Love, kicks it to Sharma. A little further out than he might have liked there. He sort of rushed that one, didn't he? He could have a little bit more patient there and got something going towards the rim. Whelan for three. Misses. A tough miss there, but the Leicester Riders starting to look a lot more like themselves on that play. Shoma back to Best. Best driving hard, getting all the way to the rim, and foul is called on Nelson Henry. A positive move there from Aaron Best. As soon as he gets on the to his strong left hand, he's a good ability to finish. You can see that he's in between two. That's the right of defenders there. Third foul on Nelson Henry. He's got 13 points and six rebounds in his final game. And he's been excellent in playoff basketball. He's averaging 12 points and eight rebounds a game in 22 minutes and playoff ball and up on his numbers for the season where he's averaging nine points and five rebounds a game so certainly looking to go out with a bang and his team 
get him to be the one that lifts the trophy at the end. The riders can't be. Here he is rolling to the basket again, and I think Sharma got a little piece of that. Taylor steps into a three and knocks it down. Beautiful shot from Taylor there, just trailing the play. Quick hit at the top of the key. He knocks it down for the trade. Big back to back plays there from London Lions. Sharm on the defensive end and then cross court to Jackson under pressure with the rearranged and he'll shoot two. Zach Jackson. Super shifty here. Great little Euro step. Drawing the foul. The riders going to need continue to complete plays like this to get back in the game. Third foul on Oni. Well, we're talking about Leicester's free throw shooting. Jackson is five for six. And this will see him become their joint highest scorer. In fact, the joint highest scorer in the game with Nelson Henry. Booted away by Nelson Henry. Oh, perfect tackles there with the left. <laughs> A goal. <laughs> Lobbed into Sharma. Best has the mismatch here. And Loved with the help. London get it back. Blocked by Loving. Numbers here for Leicester. Love takes it alone. I don't think Loving was expecting it. It will be a Leicester ball. Wow, it's a play you have to convert on when you're chasing the game like this. And easy points aren't easy to come, but you've got a, this a great block here for Mark Loving. Lobbed into Nelson Henry and has to get nothing from a four on two break. Josh Sharma again just contesting everything and certainly good enough to put Nelson Henry off there. Best is fouled by Loving and he will shoot two. Best. What a great job he's been doing in this third quarter. Just staying aggressive, staying consistent, making himself get to that line. His third trip to the line this quarter. Well, Luke Nelson only played a couple of minutes in the first half, got a couple of fouls. Comes into the game for the first time in the third quarter. Again, it just, that just exemplifies, isn't it, the, the, the talent they have on this roster. You forget, don't you, uh, uh, Luke Nelson for, for a second there, GB International. Because you've got another guy, you know, Tariq Phillip, who we weren't even talking about a month ago. You know, it just goes to show the packed with talent this roster is. Best makes both from the line. He has all six of his points from the free throw line. Oh, there's a bodies on the floor off the ball. And the foul is called against Best. It's his third. Got to start stopping in this third quarter. We've got a technical thrown in there for measure as well, and you can see that grappling, grappling, Mark Lovin there to prevent him from cutting. It's so hard to build rhythm as a team when there's so many whistles in a quarter and stop and start play. That's the 11th missed free throw. They're down 14. They missed 11 from the free throw line. a big difference in the game. Well, the foul called on Lovey. It's his third. It's got a little bitty the game here in the third period. Nelson, his first shot of the game is good. Great shot there from Luke Nelson. Nice. 
Rejects the screen, goes up, pulls up, 15 footer. Money. Just like that, instant offense, and that's what riders haven't had. They haven't had that individual yet come off the bench, the instant offense, the character left out, going all the way to the rim. Nice finish for him. Beautiful taking care of to love those snake dribble right there. He's into double figures. Only at the foul line. Rims out. Ball is loose, comes back to Oni, knocked away by Love again. London do well to prevent the transition. They do do an excellent job of just getting volleys back in transition there. No easy points for the riders. Just in screen to three. Darian Nelson, Henry, did a great job passing out of the post. Straight to Zach Jackson. Beautiful catch and shoot three. When he's stepping into that, he's so much more effective, so much more confident in his jump shot two for ten now from beyond the perimeter for the Leicester Riders he's two of four though it's kicked in the minute with 16 points to his name and with 4-12 to go in the third they've got it back to ten they've forced coach Schmidt into a timeout here but Leicester need to try and maintain this momentum when they come out of the huddle on the uh, hour scoreboard, the internal scoreboard is 61-51. It is 61-51. Kyle Ostrom now delivers a message to his guys. The glare is that for these bench points. London Lions with 20 points up the bench, and Leicester Riders just with four. So both of these two teams are deep, but it's the London Lions for that little bit more depth there, or certainly productivity in the depth. That's playing a key role here in this 10 point lead that they have. Well, he has best bench scorer into the game in McKenzie, and he's forced to turn over. No, he has a correction by the official. I think McKenzie even looked a little surprised. <laughs> Was the London ball. Good overturn there from Edudansky. Nelson turning the corner, tosses one up. Late whistle from the far side of the court. It's against McKenzie. Well, it was a bump there. You don't need to do it. Luke Nelson from his right side. That's not his most comfortable hand when going to the rim. So you have to let him make a difficult shot over you. Difficult to see there in that replay. It's just Sharma. <laughs> Fighting for the offensive rebound as he falls out of bounds. And off the mark from the free throw line. And he gets the second. Luke Nelson doing a great job of coming into the game cold but having an impact immediately. Picked it up in an awkward spot, needs some help, gets it from Whelan. Stolen away by Oni, Oni running it back. Not loose by Love again, tremendous play. Two excellent defenders of Mia Oni and Karen to Love just showed us why. Jackson stepping into the three, but a little too much juice on that. All that all riders need is that one play to, yes, of course, close the gap, but to sort of inject some level of momentum which this third quarter very start stoppy love doing well to stay in front of nelson now he switches on to best under the screen to best shoots the three and he makes it back wow big shot there from aaron best stops on a dime man gets caught under the screen big shot He's been huge for them this third quarter, Aaron Best. 
Love, nice pass, a good finish from Whelan. Excellent look, the vision from Carrington Love to see his teammate Patrick Whelan just sneaking on that baseline. Four assists now for Love. Nelson taking it hard to the rim, taking it and Menzies, and he'll shoot two. Nelson. Nelson has just jumped into this game and had an impact right away. He's staying aggressive. The London Lions keep finding their way to that free throw line. I don't know, I don't see a lot in that one either. Luke Nelson again doing the right thing. He's attacking the defender. But the whistle just comes a little bit too easy for me on that play. Nelson makes both. Looking for options, decides to take the three and it's off the mark. Good contest there from Mioli. He got out and jumped to contest that and did enough to put Adekoya off his mark. Phillip for three. Jackson with the rebound. McKenzie bouncing his way through the lane. Needs somebody to. Fine, Whelan is that person. That's going to be an illegal screen on Menzies. It's going to be his third. Wow. It's a lot of contact there. I don't think that's a foul either. I'm not sure about that. I don't, I don't think it's a foul. It's the, the referee's making a decision based on the reaction after. But Menzies is, is solid there. He's still, it's a good screen and it's a bad call. Well, the Riders fans have seen it on the big screen as well. They didn't. They agreed with you too. Nelson down to Sharma, and he finishes. Great pick and roll there from Sharma. The big man doing what he does best, finding him on the roll. Nice little pick and roll finish there. Well, London's lead is out to 16, the biggest it's been in the game. And Rob Padanostra has to call a timeout. He's got 12 minutes to try and find these 16 points and get his team back into the game. Well, right now it's going to be the last push now for the Riders. It's imperative now that they finish this. One minute, 49 seconds left of getting something offensively. They're still struggling. No real consistency. Either. One more three-pointer, but there's still two for 12. It's not a healthy look. The three-point line for the Riders. We caught it early. They needed to shoot the ball well. It's been the London Lions defense that's been able to disrupt this Riders team. Well, he's been in so many finals, Rob Padanostro. He knows how they have and flow. He'll be hoping for a flow back his way. Well, Ryan is back out on court. Here come London. And as you say, Leicester needs some momentum to take into the fourth quarter. They need to win this last 149 of the third. Whelan, back to McKenzie. McKenzie pull up. Nelson Henry keeping it alive, batted around, London have it. Lawardi down the lane, throwing it towards Sharma, but Jackson got there first. Jackson feeds it to Nelson Henry, who under pressure can't convert. There'll be a hell ball, and that'll be a Leicester possession. Darren Nelson Henry has to finish that play. Great work from Zach Jackson, who maneuvers his way 
into the heart of the defense, but Nelson Lee just didn't have enough legs on that shot. He shot it, shot it a little bit too quick. And Nelson ties him up. Whelan. Jackson now for three. And this is it. And it comes back out to Sholawati. London can run. Nelson on the trail, left open. This is the three. Tipped down by McKenzie to Whelan. McKenzie getting straight to the basket for the lane. It's an excellent tip as well, initially from Kimball McKenzie, who skied over the outreach Josh Jarma. And then before you knew it, in a matter of seconds, he's down the other end of the floor racing for a layup. Well, I'm not sure that was a great pass. It's ended up turning it over. Here's Whelan. Whelan back out to Adekoya. Cross court to McKenzie. Resets for three, but misses it. And that could have been some momentum going into the quarter break, but instead it will be London who will get the final shot of the third quarter. Kick out to Ward Hibbert for three. Rebound Jackson, who doesn't have time to hit it off. While the London Lions are 10 minutes away from a treble, can Rob Paternostro stop Ryan Schmidt from doing that? He's got to come up with some sort of master plan for the final 10 minutes. Right now, it looks like it's the Lions. We'll have the fourth quarter when we return. Welcome back to the O2. London can see the prize from here. A 14-point lead going into the last 10 minutes of the season. Here's Philip. Sholawati stumbling. Stolen by Jackson. Out to Love. Love. He's fouled and will score. Well, they have to make a push early. And what a positive start. The first 18 seconds of this fourth quarter. A steal from Zach Jackson. Who threw the outlet pass to the run in love. He absorbs the contact and makes a really difficult play there. Wow. Yeah, unreal finish there compared to Love. Well, he knows the free throws off because he went chasing it. 
That is the tail of the tape for Leicester. 12 down, they've missed 12 three throws. Shalawadi for three, rebound Jackson. Love, back to Jackson, ripped away by Nelson, but illegally so, the foul is called. Well, he pointed to the floor, it must be a shooting foul, surely. He's got, where else is he going with the ball if it's not a shooting foul? Just no, I agree, and at first I thought it was good hands from Nelson, I didn't see. It is two free throws given. Yeah, yeah. No, sure it was a foul, but if it is a foul, it had to be shooting. Nelson's third, he will sit down. And he's been really good for London. He's got five points, but there are big points during a real pivotal part of the game where London were able to push away. All of a sudden, this Rogers team feels like it's got a little bit more momentum behind it than it did in the last quarter. Oh, is that Jackson with 17 points personal? He's been the only guy that you feel like has been unscathed by the, the contagion of bad shooting. He's two for four from the three point line, and he's eight for nine from the three throw line. Along with seven rebounds, it's been a MVP caliber performance from Zach Jackson so far in this game. Well, they'll have to win in order for him to get it. And they trail by ten. Oh, and his team are going to have to make jump shots. Yeah. Three-point shot is off the back iron. Great box out by McKenzie. What's well, particularly... I think puzzling to me at the moment is London Lions don't need to settle for these contested three-point shots. But they are, and they've not scored the ball in this quarter so far, and it's allowing the Leicester Riders now to eat into this gap. Well, Adekoye can get it back to single figures here from the free throw line. Again, it's one of those plays, though, that's it's got to be an and one, isn't it? You know, you've got to be near perfect now as you make your push to make things as uncomfortable as possible now for the London Lions down the stretch. And plays like that, you... Those and ones to go. First point of the final for Jabril Adekoya. For two again. Zubchich at the top of the key. London looking for their first score of the fourth quarter. Zubchich with the mid range. Off the mark. Tipped down, but Ward Hibbert has it. Only on the trail. He blows the layup. Oh, the Lions now look a little bit disjointed offensively. A little bit uncomfortable in what they're doing. Set them for jump shots in that time only. Wasn't able to get anywhere close to making that layup. Love for three. Got caught. And he'll go to the line for three. He's got caught again for the second time now. Garrett's has been caught on the three point line. In the act of shooting, he's four for seven from the free throw line. And that is the fourth personal foul on Philip. This Riders team just chipping away, chipping away at the lead, staying consistent, not giving up on plays. It's one of the Lions team need to find a way to put the ball in the basket. Well, whatever happens at the end, they will look at these free throws and wonder what if. 14 free throws left out there for the Leicester Riders. 15. 15 missed free throws. Even if you make half of those misses, Dan, you, you know, it's so much more of a a one-point game. Interesting game. And it's a one-point game if they make half of the ones they've missed. 58% for an 80% three-point free-throw shooting team. Here's Zubchich. 
Backing down, misses. Oh, loving bubbles it, able to come up with it. London still haven't scored in this quarter. Love, I don't know if he passed it or he lost it. There's a foul on somebody. I think it's Nelson Henry. He's on the floor, and it is number 50 shown to the table, and that'll be his fourth personal foul. Kind of right into his midriff there, and you can see arm on arm contact there. Well, it'll be uh, Adekoya playing the five against Subchich. You wouldn't say either of them are a natural five. But both have done a very, very good job in that position this season. Taylor steps into the three. Big shot, Jordan Taylor. What a shot from Jordan Taylor. Right when the one in lines needed a bucket, he steps in. When he has his feet set and gets a good look at it. Get that feeling it's going in every time. Love trying to get those points back and doing so. The response from Mark Lovin, and it's a much needed one. All of a sudden, back to back threes for Bob Clubs. Taylor loses his feet, but Zubchic comes up with the ball. Best! And it's a three point shootout all of a sudden. Wow. Both teams coming alive here down the stretch. Back Loving's going to gonna step into one. Not this time. Wow, you need to make that one, don't you? It's difficult for riders who are undersized right now. When you look at the lineups, giving up a few inches in every position. Zubchic misses, loving with the rebound. Love guarded by Zubchic. Here's McKenzie. He strings the three. <laughs> Kimbo McKenzie shot that basketball before he's even caught it. In that, he had one thing on his mind. And the confidence there to knock it down. Lester in zone here. Inside to Zubchic. Great finish. Big play from Zubchic. Easy pound dribble and straight up. Jackson getting all the way to the basket for the Lions. And the point's coming freely here in the ball. They are, and you question, you know, why was this not happening before? The positive movement there, and oh, Calvin's oh, done a lot. Taylor somehow keeps possession. Out to Oni. 4 3! Oh, waving threes now in London. And it's the Lions. They use it to their advantage. Mia Oni now knocks one down. Jackson trying to reply. No, that's off the mark. Five to play. Only all the way to the basket. Blows it. Again, rebound out of Koya. It's really opened up here. Ooh, a bit of a goalie save there from Best. Jackson fighting his way out of trouble. Gets it to Loving. Misses the three. London with the rebound. Whoa! And there's a collision there, it's whether it was accidental or deliberate. The two referees are going to have a conversation. Jackson's trying to get up. Does he trip him up or is that an accident? You know, I don't. Zoom just wasn't looking, was he? So he, he doesn't know that Zach, Zach Jackson's still on the floor. Jackson might be in trouble here. Jackson's been called for a blocking foul. Leicester's first in the fourth quarter. This third personal, he will sit down. I don't think it'll be for long. No, you cannot sit him on the bench for long. 20 points he has for this Riders club. And that's not even commenting about his toughness today. He's been the guy that's been ready for the battle. What a season he's had. Oni's going to take the three. He's missed it. Whelan will get there first and save it to Loving. Loving.
trying to attack Zubcic, gets past him, all the way to the basket, tip in from Love. That went from Love just doing anything and everything to keep his club within reach here. Nine points. It's a deficit. Only four minutes to go though. As long as London keeps scoring, they've got the cushion already. Is Taylor knocked away by Love, but the foul is for well, he's had his hands on so many things today. Carrington Love, he's only got three steals, but he's impacted many more. He really has. 15 points, seven assists. What did you say, Dan? He's been that forever pest on the defensive end. No one's looking to steal or intercept the pass. Best getting to the basket, laying it in. Incredible in and out dribble there, great in the space, downhill with the left. Big play from Aaron Best. Love for three. They needed that. And London, I think, will start to take some air out of the ball here with 3.20 to go. They are on the brink of a first ever playoff victory. Best for three, big shot, misses. Long rebound comes out to Taylor though. Oni's gonna try it, he misses too. And the long rebound this time goes out of bounds for a Leicester ball. I just don't understand why London Lions are trying to go for the knockout punch. They can they can take some time out now with the shot clock. They can look for some high percentage shots or at least something positive going towards the rim, but these are contested three point shots that they don't necessarily need at this moment in time. Oh, that's come off love. Big play from the Lions defense. And that's what they hired him to do is cause havoc on the defensive end. All defensive player of the year, eight, Ivy League, NCAA Division One, Mia Oni, showing us why he's been presented with an accolade. Well, the referee's put the ball on the floor and started counting. It's just about in. Zubcic has it knocked away by McKenzie. Whelan, under great pressure, somehow finishing! The toughness of Patrick Whelan! He went straight down the middle, route one! And he's had to rearrange his shot here, despite the contact. Gets it to go. What a big play for Patrick really right in the nick of time here. Keeping this Leicester Riders team in the game. Oh, can they miss a free throw? 21 of 37. Goodness me. This is the best free throw shooting team in the league up to this point at 80%. Best. Misses the three. McKenzie has it. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Such a nice move, isn't it? The ability there to reverse that. Use the rim to protect the shot so he's not blocked by the taller athletic defender and somehow the Riders find themselves with seven well, they never quite looked like they were going to win it but with 2.27 to go it is still within reach for the Leicester Riders important for London here to keep doing what they're doing sometimes when you've got a lead you play to protect it they've just got to keep playing yeah, exactly it. If you're, if you're dribbling the air out of the ball and then not converting at the end of that shot clock, it really hurts you down the stretch. So London just need to get back to what they were doing, consistently scoring and not taking quick shots or not dribbling the air all the way out of the ball. Well, they've went away from what's got them to this point. They're, they're settling. They're settling for three-point shots and contested three-point shots. I don't understand why they're going for the knockout blow where they could have just took their time with it, got, got a higher percentage shot around the rim or at least penetration off the dribble and it's given the left the right is here hope well it's given them a chance so the London can just 
execute in this last 227 and see themselves over the line. Lester with some full court pressure. Roban in the corner is first. No rebound, Jackson. They've done it again. It's an open look, but Akenin was younger in the shot clock. They had more time to attack the rim. And if Leicester right to score here, it becomes a little bit more interesting. Well, they're baiting Love into the three, and that's why he misses everything. Was it touch? Leicester are claiming it. No, they're not. It is a London ball. Uh, it's got to be a frustrating one if you're a Leicester Riders fan. Oney passed his man. This time London do the wise thing and circle it back out. Taylor is fouled on the floor. That'll be a sideline ball because that is the fourth of the quarter. It's also the fourth on Lovey. Taylor now looking to go. Taylor is fouled, and that will be two shots. Smart play from Taylor there. That's your player getting the ball in his hands, taking control of the situation, forcing a foul. Good play from him. Yeah, and that's what they've needed, isn't it? That experience from someone like Jordan Taylor to, to, to make plays just like that. It's not settling for jump shots, making the referees blow the whistle, and he's now just a free throw. Uh, it's only the fourth one that London have missed versus 16 at the other end of the floor. Wow. It's a lot of points. Yeah. Gone missing, isn't it, for, for the Riders? He makes the second. Gap is eight once again. 90 seconds to play in the final. 90 seconds separating London from their first ever playoff victory. Here's Whelan. Fakes the three, kicks it out to McKenzie, who takes the triple, and he goes! But this may triple McKenzie, never shy to make a big shot! Well, Leicester need a stop here with 110 to play. Best is open, but he wants to take time out of the game wisely. Taylor now looking to attack, it's not loose by McKenzie, diving on the floor, shot clock is low, it's down to Ward Hibbert, does he hit the rim, it's a shot clock violation, and Leicester get a stop with 51 seconds to go down by, heroic defensive effort there from Kimbo McKenzie, who puts his body on the line, and when he go for that ball, it disjointed the London Lions offense, and Josh Ward Hibbert just couldn't get that shot off in time, it just hits back for no rim, shot clock violation. Well, Leicester need to score now, having got the stop. Love gets into the key. Loving for three. Oh, how close was that for Mark Loving? When it went down, but it just bubbled out. You cannot get any closer than that. Oh, that's got to be so frustrating for Mark Loving. Had a great look at the basket here. Contested shot. Bobbles just in oh. and then just out. Those are the margins. That could be the difference between Leicester potentially winning the game and London securing the title. <laughs> Philip to make it a three shot game now from the free throw line. Incredible performance from Tariq Philip. Cannot compliment him enough on his ability to not only get healthy but his mental resolve here he scores this it'll take him to 12 points personal along with six rebounds 
Timeout called. 31.2 seconds to go. Leicester need three scores without reply. London basically need one stop here to win the playoff final. They do, and that's all they need. It's, it's been the London Lions that have been creative enough. But just down the stretch, this fourth quarter is... It's been a little bit of turbulent times here, but the Lions have held their nerve. And if they make intelligent plays here, they see this out, and they win the 2023 BBL playoff final. Well, we're into the rounds of London have to miss free throws, really, to lose. Because there's only 30 seconds left. Leicester have to score now, quickly. They have to foul quickly, then they have to hope London miss. Whereas that loving shot, that drops in. It's 83-81 with 40 something seconds to go and those are the margins of sport well he's been calm all year Ryan Schmidt looks very calm there I'm sure inside the heart must be beating a little faster Each other so much. This will be the sixth time they know each other so well at times. It's, they're counterproductive to each other because they cancel each other out. Well, Leicester advance the ball. They've got to score here. And they've got to do it quickly. Into love, love attacks quick. And love gets the quick score. Great now team. they have to foul. Well, they tried to force a turnover in the backcourt, and what they're going to get is an easy score for Ward. Hit it underneath. It's the wrong play, isn't it? Disastrous to the riders there because they eat, eat a couple seconds off the clock. Love to the basket, doesn't score. The rebound is pulled in. Well, I thought they were going to dribble it out, but first love. Loving, sorry, gets the foul. But London are on the brink, and there's a technical foul called on somebody. I assume it's Carrington Love. Oh no, number four. Shown to the no, number four. It was, yeah, corrected. Well, that will do it now, and it's the Lions fans who are making the noise as their team is on the brink for the first time ever of winning the BBL playoff final. Somebody fouled out and all of that. It's Mark Loving. So Darren Nelson Henry will finish his court, a career on the court, but he will not be lifting the trophy as he so hoped. And Mark Loving, how close was he to making a two-point uh, game? Well, as close as it comes down, but it wasn't meant to be. And London's ability here to hold their nerve, experienced performances from Tyreek Phillip. Jordan Taylor and Aaron Best have been enough to propel them over the line down the stretch. Well, Ward Hibbert just to uh, put the exclamation point on the victory here with two free throws. Well, they can afford to miss at this stage. Both, but the clock is running anyway. McKenzie going as quick as he can, fires up the three, doesn't go. London with the rebound, and London will do the treble. And for the first time ever, the Lions are the playoff champions. And Ryan Smith with a big smile on his face celebrates with his team. Wow, it was a great first quarter that gave this London Lions team pole position and from there it was not straightforward. There was a big push late from the Leicester Riders but it was the London Lions resilience, it was their experience that got them over the line and crowned them BBL champions. Well, the two teams embrace each other. What a ball game that was. It looked for long stretches like it was going to be easy for the Lions but the width of a ring prevented it from being a two-point game inside the final minute and that is the fine line between potential victory they still had work to do Leicester and defeat 
But for London, a season that promised so much ends once again with them celebrating for the third time. They won the cup in Birmingham in January. They won the league with a record-breaking amount of games to spare. And they've been pushed all the way here in the playoff final, but they've come out on top, 88 points to 80. These are the moments, it's all smiles now. These are the moments that, as a player, you work all year. You go all the way back to pre-season in, it was July, did they start, or August? It was a long time ago, and the big slog that they've had to get here, this is what it was all about. Well, with their star-studded roster came very high expectations, and you have to deliver, you have to get the job done in order to meet those expectations, and the London Lions have done that. And you've got to say as well, without some key players today, Sam Decker, their leading scorer, the MVP of the BBL, not here today through injury, they're able to collectively come together and still get the job done. Well, let's get some quick reaction from Nat and Kieran. I tell you what, Kieran Achara, the finest of margins. If that Mark Loving three drops, it could have been a very different finish. Definitely, you know, I, I looked at that shot, I thought it was down, but, you know, it just wasn't to be. But the, the fight from the Leicester Riders, you know, people thought it was over after the third quarter, but they just kept going. What a great game. It's no surprise, is it? They didn't back down, they wouldn't back down. But in the end, was it something we've talked about all season long with this London Lions side, the strength? in depth that proved to be the decisive factor strength and depth you know and that defensive mentality that focus it really kind of grinds teams down you know and, and they just kept going kept going relentless defensively but again the riders they really stepped up due, down the stretch but it was just too little too late we talked a lot at the top of the show we talked frankly all season long about the riders offensive prowess from downtown the lions had a plan for that today an answer for that today didn't they they neutralized it that three-point shot was taken away and it, it really kind of hurt uh, the Leicester Riders. But they got to the free-throw line, they kept chipping away. They missed a lot of free-throws in that first half, which I think was really costly in the end. But again, Coach Schmidt did a great job of preparing this London Lions team and they got the job done. As he has done all season long, quite frankly, their third trophy of the season, their first ever playoff championship. They're about to get their hands on it. So let's get back to Ant and Dan. Well, it is a beautiful prize, the silver and gold basketball, and it awaits engraving with the name London Lions on it. And the presentation party are out there, okay. and we're ready to go. Well, first of all, the uh, Leicester Riders will get their runners-up medal. It's a club that doesn't come to finish second. They've finished second in three different competitions, but they can be proud of the efforts here, both over the course of the season and indeed tonight. I think so, Dan, and, you know, even commented as well, you've got to remember this London Lions team was built for Euro Cup basketball, and with that, there's a significant increase in, in budget requirements, so the caliber of players that the London Lions have is significantly higher when you talk about spend than the Leicester Riders. However, you know, again, it's another close margin. They lost by eight in the BBL Cup final. They lose by eight again today in the BBL playoff final. So the, the gap isn't that substantial that Leicester Riders are, are so far behind. The challenge that the Riders gave today was, was incredible. And their roster, Well, the Riders will now come up and collect their runners-up medal led by Kimball McKenzie who ended up with 14 Number points seven. off the bench I think Number most five. of them were in the second half if not all of them yeah I thought he was excellent on the stretch the no fear mentality Number that he brings to his play not loving how close was his shot there to just forcing it through obviously Connor Washington they've been out with pretty much all season he's played Spotty minutes here and there, but injury has sidelined him and Mo Walker. Obviously, they haven't had all year as well, but they just kept finding a way to keep on the Leicester Riders and get themselves to the final game of the season. Evan Walsh getting his medal and the role he played in the closing months. And then 
final game of his career, a very decorated career, the Riders captain, Darren Nelson Henry. Well, a, a former all BBL All Star, and you know he's he's been that that pillar for this club for the last four or five years. And he's going to surely, you know, he's going to be missed surely, just because it's really hard to replace a six foot eleven centre that can do what he can do. Incredible career from him. Pat and Astro with his children getting his uh, momentum and the assistant coaches as well. But now is the moment that this London Lions team was built for, that they were predicted to win. But it's one thing to be everybody at the beginning say we all picked them to win this trophy. It's another thing to go out and deliver. But his down and it isn't been without its adversity itself as well. Sam Decker out, Costa Cooper's leaves the season, and Ozzy Stoko lose and le leaves the season as well. So that's three of the high profile players they had that weren't here today to contribute to this victory. First up, Thomas Love, Zubchich getting his medal, Josh Ward Hibbert, who, again, he's a guy whose numbers never look like they jump off the page, but he does so many intangible things for this team. No, you don't need to have stats to jump off the page. You need players that make those little plays. And Josh Hibbert's one of those players. They knew that too when they had him at Leicester. That's why he was there for a few years. Jordan Taylor, 15 points, five rebounds, seven assists. He's got to be in the running for the MVP award as well. See Sam Decker on his little. I'm not even sure what that is. Some sort of little bite thing he's got there to set surgery this week. He's the only way to get round. Josh Shaw, what a presence he's been in the game. Yeah, he was changing the shots, wasn't he? To pay him. The shots he didn't block. The psychological imprint he had on the opposition made them think twice before they shot the ball. And he had four blocks. In total, and as you say, could have certainly impacted many more. And Coach Schmidt, with his young child getting his medal, and Robert Youngblood, no stranger to a playoff final medal. And that is Terry Phillip. Who would have thought he'd be contributing on a playoff final court at the start of the season with the severe injury that he had? But here he was, and doing a great job. And now Wins is the moment for the MVP. Let's see who it is. Wearing the number four the London Lions. It is Jordan Taylor. 15 points, five rebounds, seven assists, two steals. He takes the MVP award. Deserve it. MVP as well. I thought he was really good at pivotal moments in this game, especially down the stretch when... The team needed a, a disciplined or more experienced approach to closing this game out. Jordan Taylor was the man who popped up and delivered. And he is the man who goes home with the golden basketball. But there is the one prize that they all came for. And it is Bedeck in silver and gold. And the CEO, Aaron Rayden, will do the honors. He will post the pictures with Terry Phillip. And the players line up ready. He's got it in his hands. And a little dance and a little jig. And in 2023, the playoff champions are the London Lions. Well, they've completed the treble. And it's obviously heavy because he struggled with the lift there for a bit. But this is what they all worked for all season and they finally got their hands on it and tonight will be a good night for the Lions to party I can confirm that trophy is extremely heavy I remember carrying that back to the Midlands many moons ago and it's, uh, it's made of the real stuff Dan Chicka tape is flying all over the O2 and London will line themselves up and pose for the pitchers as they are the champions of 2023, a treble championship, adding the playoffs to their cup and league titles. Everybody.
already get involved. What a night it's going to be for them. And thoroughly deserved. It was a cracking game of uh, playoff basketball. Came right down to the final minute. But London were in front for most of the game. And always looked more likely. And when the horn sounded, they had an eight-point cushion to spot these celebratory scenes. But on the half of the British basketball league and the women's British He's done the trouble. League. Triple silverware winners this year. And again, Dan, I cannot re-emphasize enough. The expectations are there. You've got to deliver. And today, they have delivered. Well, they certainly have delivered. And as ever, there was a lot of contributions up and down the statue. We weren't 100% sure where the MVP was going because there were so many different guys who did different things at different times in the game. Yeah, I think a recognition for me, Aaron Best, I thought he was excellent. I thought he made those plays. Yes, he scored the basketball well. He had 15 points, but he battled today. He led from the front. And he was one of those contributors. Mia Olney, again, 14 points for him. And Tariq Phillip, the guy that was a non-factor just three or four weeks ago. We didn't see the work he was putting in behind the scenes. And today, he's putting a stellar performance. 12 points, 6 rebounds. Well, London Lions are the playoff champions. Let's go back over to Nat. And they're the playoff champions because... As you were pointing out to me as we were watching the game play out, they controlled the tempo for much of the game. They, did, they definitely did that. You know, they, they started off with intent. They really picked up defensively, but they just knew how to turn it off, uh, turn it up when they needed to. And that, that rhythm of the game, you know, was w essentially what got them to win in the end. Let's put this content, this uh, win into context. A treble win. Bear in mind they were competing in successfully for a long time in Europe as well. Sure, they've got a deep roster, but they've had to deliver on so many fronts. So many fronts, and then at the same time, I think the battle on the injuries, the amount of games, the amount of load, they've managed it so well. And what I always say about good teams, they have a really strong system that they believe in. Every, every player knows exactly what they're meant to be doing. And that's what Coach Schmidt has created there at the London Lions this season. And it's just great to see that they're, they're building momentum. And I think, you no, know, <laughs> there's, there's more to come. I tell you what, I've got to say for everybody, the benefit of everybody at home, this confetti flying around and Kieran Achara still got nimble feet because he is ducking and diving and there isn't a bit on him at all. Uh, speaking of which, let's have a look at our MVP, Jordan Taylor. What a performance he had this afternoon. Talk through because he was contributing on every level, wasn't he? He just does it all. And, you know, we, we talk about his scoring prowess, his ability to score the ball. He controls the game. He, he, he took over. He's standing right beside me right now, so I'm going to make him look good. <laughs> but I, I just love his, you know, the consistency. He knows how to get to his spots, knocking down the shots, feeding, feeding the big man, keeping their bigs happy, making big threes. It was a dominant performance. Great game. Jordan Taylor, welcome to the BBL. Time that to perfection. Points, boards, assist steals. You were doing all. Congratulations, firstly, on the MVP. Just talk us through what this means to you, both as a player and the team as well. A treble winning season and the Lions' first playoff title. Uh, for me, it means a lot, man. You know, obviously, I came here in the middle of the season. Uh, Ryan and, and Brett believed in me, and then these guys welcomed me into the team, like pretty much like family within a couple weeks, man. And we, we got a special group, uh, you know. We get into it on the court, we get into it off the court, but it's really like a, like brothers, man. It's for real. And MVP trophy is great, but that's really like a team award. We won the game, so it really could have been any. It could have been Mie, uh, could have been AB in the second half. So it's really just, just a team award, man. So it means a lot. Is there a sense right now with this Lions side competing in Europe as well? It's a real renaissance for British basketball at the moment, and the Lions at the forefront of that. Are you aware of that as a team? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, Ryan, uh, Ryan lets us know every day how proud he is of us. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to follow him and Ash and Brett and Youngblood, all the coaches. Um, and, you know, what, what they're building right now at the Lions, what we're building is, I think, is special, can be really special. Um, and I'm just happy to be a part of it, for real. We talk about building. You know, it's your first time in London playing at the O2. You know, what does, how does this stack up? You know, playing a lot of big arenas. How does this stack up in, in your career? Um, you know, I think any time you get a venue like this is, is amazing. Like, it just shows, it kind of validates what... You know, what 777 is building and what London already has, what they had back in the 90s. Youngblood tells us all the time. Uh, so, you know, it just kind of validates the, the following that it has. And, and Leicester's a great team. I think it's, it's a great storyline. Obviously, I know they've been dominant in the league, um, you know, but they, they don't go away. And I'm sure they'll be back next year and we'll be back next year, too. And it's, uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just special, man. 
Yeah. I think it's fair to say there'll be a little bit of a celebration tonight, right? Yeah, a little bit, something like that. I can't tell you just what, but yeah, we're going to have some fun. You've got to enjoy that. Congratulations on the MVP and the title. Appreciate well that. done. Brilliant stuff. And it was a brilliant, as Jordan said, brilliant team performance all round from the London Lions. Let's key in on a couple of the other big performances. Mia Oni, we said at the start, was likely to be pivotal if they were going to win. He lived up to that billing. He was indeed. Started off with a bang. Boom goes the dynamite right off the bat. But the thing for me, when I'm, when I'm looking at the way he was playing, he came with intent. He wanted to be a, a dominant player at both ends of the court. Picked up full court at times, pressured the ball, and then was electrifying at the offensive end. A brilliant performance from him in the London Lions win, and certainly a performance that would have put a smile on Coach Ryan Schmidt's face. Coach Schmidt, great to see you. Congratulations. Let's firstly talk about Mia Oni, because we were just seeing footage there. How big an afternoon did he have? Oh, he had a huge afternoon. I mean, I think you got a chance to see, you know, his impact on the floor is both on the offensive end and defensive end, right? I thought, again, he made big plays defensively, you know, hit some big shots at some key moments, you know, and again, just overall, um, you know, he definitely left his imprint on the game. So did Jordan Taylor, of course, our MVP. He contributed in so many different areas and very much led a team performance because at crucial times, Aaron Best stepped up. You saw players that maybe had a quieter first half, crucial time in the second half. Yeah, no, I thought, again, you know, they, they did, they're such a good team, Leicester, and obviously we knew even at halftime we talked about, like, it's not going to be, you know, we're not going to blow these guys out. It's going to come down to the final minutes. And I've got some competition here, I think. You could ask the question. And I think, again, you saw just the poise. I think, you know, the character of our team and Jordan and Aaron both did a good job. But just, again, there was a couple times where, you know, it looked like it could have swung the other way, right? And I thought those guys both made big plays at big moments. You know, and again, just championship caliber, you know, plays like we've talked about all season long. And I think the best part about our team, which I've loved, is it's a different guy every night. You know, and I think, again, there's a, you don't hear guys complaining about minutes or complaining about shots. It's what do we got to do to win a game? You know, and again, it's just, it's truly been an honor to coach these guys. You know, it's a little bit, you're kind of relieved the season's over, but you know, you're going to miss it. But I'm actually glad we don't practice tomorrow. <laughs> I just want to harp on that point about balancing the minutes and finding that load. And there's been injuries you've dealt with a lot. How do, you, how do you find a way to communicate that? You know, some players, Luke Nelson, for example, tonight didn't play as many minutes. You know, I don't know what the reason for that, but how do you find a way to communicate that and get people to buy in? You know, honestly, it's, you know, we started with the very beginning of the season, you know, and again, I've always just been a believer in just, you know, being authentic and transparent, right, and just not hiding anything. It's just sometimes as a coach, you know, you're going to have card conversations, right, and again, with our guys, you know, they've known what the, you know, the overall goal and the vision of what this organization and team is doing this year, both domestically and in Euro Cup, you know, and I think to, to their credit, I thank them all the time, I, you know, it's, it's not every day that you get a group of guys that, you know, aren't going to be salty, right? I mean, you, you play the game at a high level. It's not fun sometimes to not, not have your number called. But at the end of the day, you know, you just mentioned Luke. He was the loudest guy on the bench down the last four minutes, you know, calling out coverages and what he needed to do. And that's just, the, you know, the epitome of being a good teammate. And that's just, again, for me, that's who we are. Well, Coach Schmidt, congratulations on a terrific afternoon, a terrific season. It looks like you've got to get back to daddy duty now, so we'll let you take care of that and enjoy the win. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Right. Brilliant stuff from Ryan Schmidt there. A brilliant season from the London Lions. Ended it as they started, quite frankly, the domestic travel strong in Europe as well. And, of course, their first playoff title in the bag. Congratulations to them. Commiserations to the riders who, of course, ran them so hard on so many different fronts this season. But this is all about the London Lions this afternoon. That is all from us here at the O2. We hope you've enjoyed another fantastic season of British basketball. Why don't we do it all again next season, huh? What a season it has been for British basketball. And we have been here every step of the way, right here on Sky Sports. Hollywood Mike Tuck showing that anything Taj Green could do, he could I can do. do better, baby. Oh, look hey. at that. That was absolutely disgusting. That was absolutely disgusting. Nasty. That boy is a superstar. Y'all see him? That's my dog. He's up, man. Look up to Shaba. Oh, my. Just Shaba. What a finish. Well, different guys got to step on for different nights. That boy's acting different that. today. <laughs> Evans, nice. Oh my goodness! Thrown into the bleachers by French. Oh, Patrick Wheeler with the denial.
right then. Second half action coming your way. Let's go, baby. It's showtime. That's the best part. Jeez! Which one of the best would you be in the world? All of them. I'm really good at basketball. <laughs> Um, I always ask myself the question, would I be able to deal with someone like me for 10 months a year? The answer is probably no. Oh, no. <laughs> See, this is a real, <laughs> this is a real KJ. I lost to that. It's a beautiful city, even though the weather is not as good as I would like it. Thanks for taking some time out and hanging out with us today. Thank you. <laughs> I've done it once or twice. <laughs> Our dynamic duo, our commentary team of Dan Routledge and Antro, I'm delighted to say they are back with us once again. Oh, let's just have Antro on his own. We don't need me in that shot with him and his big packs. Dan Routledge called that one 25 years ago, and Kieran Achara is telling me that that was Mike Tuck's first game for the Sheffield Sharks. <laughs> Here we go. A touch of Miami. <laughs> it's got a very snazzily dressed, Dan Rowe and Dan Routledge. We're just retro in general. You hit the nail on the head. We're getting to the meat and potatoes of the season. Both of these teams are hotter than fish grease. You get lost in the sauce really easily. The London Lions, London the cup Lions! champions for 2023. The London Lions are the trophy champions once again. Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! Can you believe it? David Slow wins it on the bottom! He'll give it a kiss and hold it along. The Caledonia Gladiators are the 2023 trophy champions. Sam Decker with the trophy and the 2023 BBL champions of the London Lions. This is playoff basketball, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Everything is magnified. Every possession matters. And if you don't come in here with the right mindset, you will get sent home.